tomorrow morning, you'll face what some medical researchers believe plays a contributing role in 80% of all ailments. It's called stress. But you can fight back, because researchers have also discovered that, among other things, a proper diet and regular exercise can lead to reductions in stress. So tomorrow, get some exercise, and above all, eat right. This Food for Thought was brought to you by Campbell Soup Company. We make all these fine products, and we'd like to help more Americans eat right. In just a few seconds, you're going to hear about the biggest offer Time magazine has ever made, including a fantastic free gift. So stay right where you are, and I'll be back to tell you how to get it all. You like to keep up with what's going on in the world, don't you? You bet. Well, if you call this toll-free number, you get Time magazine for almost half off the cover price. Oh, sounds good to me. I'll take it. Uh-uh. I'm not through. You actually get that discount for half a year. 27 issues. So you know what's going on in the world. In the nation, with politics, interesting people, the latest movies, your health, and technology. And you get it with all the color and insight only time can deliver. So you really understand what's going on. That's for me. I'll take it. Not yet. You get free home delivery. Great. I'll call. Not so fast. Wait to see this. What? The time, 35 millimeter camera. It's free with your paid subscription. You gotta be kidding. No, we're not. It has a 50 millimeter fixed focus lens and a range of exposure settings, so you'll take great pictures. I'll take it. Wait. It comes with a protective lens cap and a neck strap. Terrific. And that's not all. You even get a handsome carrying case and a full color guide to better picture taking. And all you have to do is call 1 800 621 6400. Now? Now. That's 27 issues of time for almost half off a free 35 millimeter camera. Lens cap, strap, carrying case, and photo guide, all for three easy payments of just eight eighty nine. Uh, hello? I'll take it. Hi, I'm Judy, one of the operators here at Time Magazine, standing by to take your order. Call now and get this amazing offer. Time for almost half off the cover price and the Time 35mm camera free. But hurry, an offer this good won't be around forever. Now, back to The Amazing Spider-Man. I'm home. Bad news at the dentist. Our teeth aren't getting clean enough. So Mom got us the Reach toothbrush. A toothbrush makes a difference? Clinical studies show Reach cleans 51% better than other leading brushes. Reach is angled to reach every tooth. And only Reach has reaching bristles to get between teeth and along gums. It cleans 51% better. And it's recognized by the American Dental Association. Hope you got me, Reach. Reach from Johnson & Johnson cleans 51% better. Oh, my arm. Rub something on it. I got Ben Gay. I don't want to go back to work smelling like Ben Gay. Don't. Try sports cream. It smells nice and clean. Does it work? Sports cream has a strong clinically tested pain reliever. It starts to penetrate immediately to relieve sore muscle pain. No work after that? Sure. I feel great. Why? You uh, usually smell like Ben Gay. Not anymore. Sports cream, the fast-acting pain reliever that smells great. What makes new improved Fresh Start a super powder? Let my super stain maker show you, honey. Nothing beats a barbecue. Linda. Raspberry yogurt gross. Dad. Uh, chocolate icing is always a hit. And Billy. Don't forget the mud. Those are tough stains. Yes, and while no detergent gets out everything, Fresh Start now has even more stain fighters than before. So stains like these are no problem. See? We're a super clean, get a super powder. You improve Fresh Start. If you thought Lipton Cup of Soup just made soup, you're in for a surprise. Like green beans even a kid could love. Mixed with cream of chicken cup of soup. Or chicken that's anything but boring. Coated with tomato cup of soup and breadcrumbs. It's easy. Those perfectly blended cup of soup seasonings mean no chopping or measuring. And for a light dip, stir spring vegetable cup of soup into plain yogurt. And you thought cup of soup just made soup. Us syncopators of progressive ribs have a unique style of jawing. Howard says jazz musicians talk funny. And after a gig, I finger pop with a light beer from Miller. After playing, Howard enjoys a light beer. Light is super cool and a breeze on the calories you dig. Light is less filling with a third less calories than a regular beer. And the taste, Howard? Oh, man, it's Obop Shaban. It's lay down, break down, birdie on the hot side of town. 
He likes it. Like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. <laughs> and less. Professional models demanded it. CoverGirl created it. Mascara for the look and performance they need every time. CoverGirl Professional Mascara. Look at the brush. Professional. Curved to reach and lavish every lash. Look how the rich, fiber-free formula covers evenly. Stays on. Look at those lashes. Professional from base to tip. CoverGirl's dem demanded it. Why not you? Professional Mascara. Only from CoverGirl. Now, home communications is made simpler because QT&T put a telephone answering machine, a hands-free speakerphone, and a solid-state push-button telephone into the QT&T answer phone. The pre-recorded message lets you screen incoming calls. Hello, sorry you're not in. Have I got a deal for you? This is Premier Aluminum Siding. And the machine records and stores up to 60 messages. Answer phone is a hands-free duplex speakerphone. Just push the talk button and carry on a simultaneous conversation from anywhere in the room. The recall button lets you read out busy numbers automatically, and the speaker lets you hear when someone answers. Push the mute button, and the party on the other end can't hear. It's for you. Are you here? I'm not here. I'm sorry. He's not here. Answer phone's push button dialing system is pulse tone switchable. That means you can use it on all long distance phone services, no matter which phone system is in your home or office. So, home communications is made simpler. The QTT Answer Phone is the home communications center that helps you never miss important phone calls, gives you privacy and security when you want it, and lets your family talk and listen together on one telephone. To buy all these components separately could easily cost over $300. QT&T suggested retail price $139.95. But wait, you can buy the QT&T answer phone direct from Urban General for only $79.95. And you can still take advantage of QT&T's optional six-year warranty. No other phone company offers that. Here's how to order your answer phone today. To order the answer phone, call 1-800-257-1234. Or send check or money order for $79.95 plus $5 shipping and handling to answer phone. Post Office Box 7500, Atlanta, Georgia, 30357. Or call 1-800-257-1234. That's 1-800-257-123. Long before Dallas. Doctor, that sure is a beautiful am. Decades before Dynasty. You know what a frightful girl I was when you married me. I did not deceive you, sir. There was giant. Me, I'm going to have more money than you ever thought you could have. Where land is big and the power of men even bigger. Fly him out and get him out of here. James Dean, Elizabeth Taylor, Rock Hudson, Giant, on your Superstation, Sunday morning. Now, back to The Amazing Spider-Man. Americans love a sale. All real Americans love to save money. You can save money at the great American Frigidaire sale. Select Frigidaire refrigerators, ranges, washers and dryers, and more. All at great American sale prices. Now, you won't save just a nickel or a dime. You'll save green and lots of it. So go to your participating Frigidaire dealer now during his great American Frigidaire sale. That's an order. Sassy Jello Gelatin, what are you up to now? We grab an apple and give it zing. We peel an orange and have a fling. We're up to something and it should be understood. Sugar-free Jello Gelatin, we're up to something good. We turn a carrot into a treat. We're low in calories, we got Nutrisweet. We're up to something and that something is good. Look for our recipes and magazines. Sugar-free Jello Gelatin, we're up to something good. <laughs> I said that thin pad didn't work. I was totally skeptical about this product. I yeah. said, I don't believe it. So what changed your mind? Sure and natural. Sure and natural. Sure and natural. Sure and natural took out maxi bulk and replaced it with a super fiber system so the pad can be thin. It's true. Sure and natural replaces any thick pad. You can get thick pad protection out of this thin pad. I'm sold on it. I'm sold on sure and natural. Sure and natural. So much protection, you'll never go back to thick. I'm not ready to go yet, okay? I'm not ready. You gotta wait. Just, I got shit to do. I'm in the middle of something, right? Just hold on.
Watch your mouth. <laughs> or don't come in here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, please, people. Come on. We're adults here. You know <laughs> what? <laughs> what is the point? The yeah, yeah. We're adults here. I got a fucking Burger King fucking thing on my head. We're all fucking adults here, guys. People, in my chat, two words. What are they? Two words. Let me let me see the chat flood. Let me see the chat flood. Two words. Okay. Uh, next caller. Please. Let's get into the meat and potatoes, which translate in American to dick and balls. I got flip flops. These are my flip flops. Yeah, I I, I really like my my flip flops because I can like I can like put them on. I can and because look, watch me watch me put them on. I can put them on all by myself. Watch me put watch me put them on. Look, can, are you watching? Look, these are my flip flops. Thanksgiving Day. I remember it clearly. I was Thanksgiving Day. I was I was inserting myself in somebody else's fucking business as a uh, as a cash grab and you know. This channel is harsh reality. Karen Yak se jodió la sucia vida. Amen. This is Jonathan Lee Richards. This is, I have, I have cheeseburgers. I'm going to put cheese on them. I'm going to make sure that I have my hamburgers because I'm a big boy now and I can make the hamburgers. My mom lets me use the stove now. I'm just like wow they're they i like receipts and, and and they brought receipts like they had they had evidence to back up everything they said and i'm like okay well there's got to be another side to this right like this can't this can't no this is too fantastic yeah because you're not going to just jump to the conclusion that there's a conspiracy amongst cops to cover up a murder you know what i mean you're yeah i mean cops and just like soccer moms and shit like that's what made it even crazier like <laughs> Uh, yeah, get it, Betty. Yeah, did you get have it. a close relationship with your mom? Get it, Betty. Oh, of get course, it. I still do. Yeah. <laughs> my, my older sister was kind of sad. she was more of the prissy girl. And, like, that is the best the shit, fucking you know, ever. Shopping for the dresses with mommy. I was the you know tomboy that liked playing with people. Shout out to Cherry for just being just easily the most faithful and loyal supporter that I've ever had that someone could have that tenacity with loyalty. Um, and I'm really blessed to have someone like Cherry uh, be part of this channel and in my life. So um, it means a lot. And yes, I named him after Mr. T and Rocky. Say it, woman. Say it, woman. Say it, woman. Sit your old man ain't got no heart. Why don't you come down to my apartment? I show you a real man. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so in love with this little dude. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. I love you guys very, 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 very much. And we will do this again very soon, my friends. Oh, say bye. Say bye. <laughs> oh, I love you too. Give me a kiss. Oh, I love you. <laughs> bye, guys.
people, people, people. Happy St. Patty's Day. No, yeah, I know. I'm not wearing green because I'm a rebel. I'm a maverick. Okay, people, you understand? But happy St. Patty's Day to all of you with Irish blood and you guys who are celebrating and having a having a little cocktail uh, in order to celebrate. And I hope that uh, the... Um, yeah, I hope that, uh, that you have something better to do than to watch me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, it's great to see you regardless. I'm glad that you're here. Uh, do not get me wrong. Um, there's a few things I want to go over. Mostly this is just going to be fun. Uh, I know uh, <laughs> I know. it's Watt and Doffer did another uh, video, put that out there. We're going to go over that. Um and uh plevin did a video we're gonna go over that this is just a just a just a chill stream that we're gonna just hang out nothing real pressing except for one little little thing that i'm just gonna knock out of the way um now i have not heard this clip yet i'm gonna explore it live with you guys uh but uh twitter is is pretty active about this one particular thing that uh apparently allegedly uh Sean on the Gulf had stated yesterday or alluded to or I don't know what because I haven't listened to it yet um but uh apparently um Sean allegedly said something to the effect um that Turtle Boy was in, an informant for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Now, uh, if that is uh, not, if that's not believable, I don't know what is. That's just not, I, I just, I, I, I don't buy it. <laughs> um, and so I, and, and honestly, I don't imagine Sean saying something like that, at least without being able to provide proof. Um, so uh, I, I don't know what the fuck's going on, if I'm being totally honest. But like I said, we're going to explore it uh, and and I'll give my thoughts. That's why I like to do reactions so that you guys get the most honest uh the most honest possible, um, uh, I guess, uh, opinion of mine. Uh, now again, I don't know. Uh, and sometimes even like I'll react and I'll be like, uh, and I don't have the words and then I'll be able to, uh, elaborate a little bit better later. But, um, I don't mean to like build this up into being something bigger than it is because I don't know how I, I don't know the magnitude of it. I really don't. I have not seen it yet. So I, I don't know what the hell's going on. I saw uh Turtle Boy's response to it on Twitter. Um I saw Plevin's tweets, I saw young jerks Mike's uh responses to Plevin's tweets. Um so I was like, all right, let's let's before I get into what I planned on really getting into, let me go ahead and figure out what's going on here um, in here for myself. So I asked Cherry while I was getting ready for the stream to uh, search for this part. Uh, I don't know if it's the right timestamp. She said that this is the part where he starts talking about Turtle Boy and. Um, so I don't know if this is the right part or not, but if somebody actually has the timestamp for it, I will really appreciate it. Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. Before I forget, off the subject, when I get back into that, I know buddy, most of you guys are like, what the fuck, dude? Um, I There's something that I, I have to bring up that's... Uh, completely unrelated um so friday night friday night yeah friday night into the early morning hours of saturday morning i was on stream with uh on deets on the streets channel um and there was some drama going on for sure uh but it was merited um 
there was this woman named uh, Rachel Morin who was murdered. Um, I believe it was in New Hampshire. I think I know I covered it when it happened, uh, but I don't remember exactly all the details because it's been a while. Uh, all I know is that she was murdered. I know that they have the suspect's DNA, but the DNA is not in any database because this person does not have a record, apparently, or never submitted their DNA um, for it to be in their on their record. So uh, I don't I, I I don't know what the situation is, um, but apparently there was this really. Um, now, before, let, let, let me let me explain this real quick. Um, and I do apologize because I, 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 I am ADHD, like not just throwing that word around like people throw around the word OCD, like I am clinically ADHD uh, and real bad. Um, but I <laughs> so I apologize for jumping from one thing to another. But I'm, I, I have to explain that this channel has always um stood at a position of being very much against um the harassment of victims uh or the um the spreading of misinformation and how that could affect victims uh this is the true crime community on youtube um and uh i think that it, one of the reasons why this isn't taken seriously the way that like, say, you know, like an independent YouTube channel or true crime channel isn't taken seriously. Even, even the better ones out there aren't taken seriously uh, the same way that say an independent musician is taken seriously and does well. Um, I think it's because of the flooding the 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 overwhelming amount the ocean of true crime creators who do very shady nefarious things just to get clout uh and there is a channel um called crime sleuthing <laughs> very original right uh i'm sure there's probably at least a dozen <laughs> and cherry please behave thank you um, so this channel, Crime Sleuth, and I've never actually watched one of her streams in their entire, I don't think I've ever watched one of her streams. I think, uh, maybe at one point when I was, um, uh, doing streams with, uh, this one creator who's, uh, turned out to just be the biggest douchebag of all time, um, we got drunk and crashed her first live stream. I think, uh, is as far as what she says, I probably did that. Uh, I, I don't care that I did that. Uh, <laughs> I don't care that she's upset about it, uh, because she turned out to be exactly what I probably suspected her to be when I did that, which was a piece of shit. YouTube creator who it just wants to use, uh real people victims um for some sort of notoriety which is very very strange uh i understand if you're trying to use your platform to make a difference to try to uh or or, or even just discuss things and share your opinions of course like that's okay but you have to be very careful to not twist informations because twist information regarding that case because uh, these things, these cases are very, um, sometimes very gruesome. Uh, but regardless of the details of the case, usually 99.9% .9 of the time, uh, someone lost somebody. Uh, many people lost someone. Uh, and, and we have to try to be very, very, uh, careful about how we address these cases to some degree. Uh, and in the Rachel Morin case, um, now the, 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 this crime sleuth in person, she's, she goes out of her way apparently to, 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 to talk about, to, to contact victims, families, um, and always the same thing. She's not doing anything any different than any of the other ones who do this shit are, 
that are like, oh, I just wanted to let you know that uh, that you're loved and we understand and I can't tell you how sorry I am for your loss or what you could be going through and blah, blah, blah. But by the way, I have a YouTube channel and I'd love to have you up here and I'd love to have you talk to you and I'd love to have everyone hear how you feel and how this has affected you. Um, always that shit fucking happens. And a good deal of the time, these people, these victims, um, just want anybody to hear them. Uh, if they don't feel that the news like interviewed them properly and 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 only spliced up little parts of their interview, and they were like, "No, like my child's missing, or my child is dead, or whatever," and they didn't express how important it was for me to find to get justice. Um, so they will go, jump on every platform sometimes. Um, and there is one victim, uh, if you follow the, uh, the University of Idaho murders, uh, the quadruple murder that happened in the University of Idaho, Idaho um, in Moscow, uh, Idaho, uh, there is um, one victim uh, whose father has been very... Um, vocal um and uh and to the point to where even when i was first when the first the case first happened and i was covering it i i would talk about man dude i wish this guy would kind of maybe pull it back a little bit like i understand he's grieving and everything and i get it but there are three other families you know there's there's three other victims with families uh and and what he's saying could affect the case and i wish he would just you know, but he still has the right to speak out at the same time. So, uh, but <laughs> this this person, in my opinion, uh, is very, very um, distraught. Uh, he doesn't feel that everybody has been honest with him. Uh, and, and, and I can understand that. Uh, and he's upset and he wants answers and he wants justice and he wants it swiftly. And I, I fully understand that. Um, well, not fully, because I've never been through what he's going through, but I can, I, I, I can understand. Um, and he's, um, so this person is obviously in a, in a, in a, in a position to where he's, he could be very, very, um, uh, manipulated, uh, because his emotions are, are very rampant at the moment. Uh, and understandably so. And so uh, when people reach out to this person, he, he's liable to say something driven by emotion. He's liable to say something, anything that is going to be on social media that can be pulled off social media, that could be screenshot, shared, and then twisted to being anything uh, by anybody who's looking to gain some sort of clout here on this platform or other social media platforms. Now, um, this, uh, this, this channel, um, I don't know all the details, so I won't really, you know, but apparently, uh, she was getting some, uh, pushback from the community about, uh, reaching out to these family members, um, and then there was this woman who actually discovered uh, Rachel Morin's body. Um, and apparently she had reached out to her or vice versa. Don't know the details. And the this creator promised this woman... Uh, I believe it was a thousand dollars. She, uh, and you're gonna you're gonna love this because it's gonna ring some bells. She pledged a thousand dollars to this person, and this person. Uh, and this is why I like Deets's channel because Deets just isn't gonna just like let shit like that slide, you know. Uh, so she's gonna address the shit, um, and she's gonna allow people up there that are gonna address it. And so, um, right, there you go, Rubicon. <laughs> there you go. Rubicon was the first one. Oh, no, sorry. 
Uh, it was Amy in Boston that was the first one. Uh, but yes, she pledged. So uh, if you're familiar with that, uh, that term and, and, and its history recently in this community, then you know how that went. Uh, this supposedly happened back in August. This pledge was made. Okay, now I understand it's a smaller channel. She's not making that kind of money. But the bottom line is, I, I think we can all agree that you you don't promise things unless you can deliver, period. That is the bottom line. I don't give a shit what excuses she gave. And it was fascinating because we're talking about somebody who, after receipt, after receipt, after receipt, was shown this per to this person over hours of a long live stream. She was on the panel and receipts were being shown to this person. And she just uh, was like, nope, denied, lied lied again lied again it was really insane like even though the evidence was right in front of her she was just lying it was insane never seen anything like it to the point where i had to get on panel and and i, I it was like looking at a, a uh like 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 some sort of crazy natural thing in evolution that you never get to see some anomaly that you've always wondered how the how did that happen how does that happen and can i watch it happen and here I was watching someone totally delude themselves. And I had to ask her, I was like, do you know, like, do people like you know when you're full of shit? Do you know that you're fucking lying? You know, um, it's crazy. It, it was it was mind blowing. It was very, very fascinating. So then. Um, after this. Uh, she. She. Um, she, the subject, um, like I said, the subject of the $1,000 came up and whatever. Um, and then uh, Sleuthy Goosey happened to have been in the chat and Sleuthy Goosey uh, suggested, is there a link that I can donate to, to get that $1,000? Because the truth is in, in, in the YouTube true crime community and any YouTube community, really in most of them anyway, um, if it's, if, if, if it's the kind of community that we are, uh, to a certain degree, um, everyone came together. Like it, it was amazing. It was a beautiful thing to be part of. Um, and, and so Sleuthy brought it up, but there was no link. And the person who was involved in this thing with crime Sleuthin was, uh, she was she was scared of the whole thing. She was like, I don't want anything to do with it. I don't, you know, like I appreciate it and everything, but I won't be handling that money. I, I just don't. And I don't blame her at all. I really don't. Um, but then Dietz stepped up and Dietz just gave her personal cash app. And if Dietz says that's where the money's going, then that's where the money's going. I have no doubt, no reason to doubt that whatsoever. No reason to be suspect, suspect of it. Nothing. She says that's where the money's going to go. I have no reason to believe that Dietz would be in any way dishonest or have some sort of side dealing nonsense that I that that is shady in some way. There's no way. Um, so she shares it and she raises, I think, thirteen hundred dollars in just a couple of hours. It was amazing. It was a beautiful thing to be a part of, and. Uh, this person, ironically, I'm not going to spend this time just trashing this person. I just want to say uh, this person, even though they set up the debt and it wasn't a debt, it was just, you know, this person needed therapy. The purpose was it was a person who found a dead body and was traumatized from it and needed therapy. And I can absolutely understand that. I have never stumbled upon a dead body before. I don't fucking know what's that can, what that's going to do to me. So this poor woman needed therapy. She trusted this creator and this creator basically promised her the money for therapy. And then she never got it and she couldn't afford it. So the community basically came together, not for any other reason, honestly, than to just 
make sure that this person gets that money as quickly as possible so they can get that therapy as quickly as possible. And that was the purpose. That was why Sleuthy Goosey brought it up. That's why Deets on the Streets dropped the link. That's why everyone donated. And so when this happened, this person didn't even mention how nice it was that the community came together, how proud they were. They didn't say thank you. I wish I could do it right now. Can't do it. Nothing. It was the most... It was mind-blowing to see this kind of behavior. And again, I'm not a mental health professional, but when you read what the symptoms of narcissism are, this woman was absolutely displaying all of them. Uh, this is someone who I believe needs some sort of help, uh, and I hope that she seeks it. But um, mostly... The reason why I brought this up was to just tell everybody who happens to hear this, who was in uh, Dietz's chat uh, and donated. Thank you so much. You guys are fucking amazing for doing that. And I am, again, that was one occasion where I was just so proud to be part of this community. So thank you guys for doing that. Give yourselves a hand. All right, so moving on um, and getting back to what I was going to bring up. Uh, so apparently, Sean McDonough, Sean on the Gulf, um, and his uh, and his channel um, going through the motions. Um, he allegedly made some sort of allusion to Turtle Boy being uh, an informant for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, I'm calling bullshit. Uh, I'm calling bullshit on, honestly, both. I, I'm calling bullshit, first of all, of course, there's no way Turtle Boy is. just doesn't add up. Uh, we'll get into that if we have to, but it just doesn't add up. Uh, and uh, Sean... Um, saying that, uh, I, I don't, I mean, I could see him like dancing around the possibility just to get to the truth. Nobody's above the truth. I get that, but you know, let's just, let's, let's just watch and see what he says here. He's suffering from PTSD. Now, yeah. remember, I have not heard this yet. This is a timestamp given to me. That he just starts talking about Turtle Boy. I don't even know if this is the part. So that's clear. The poor guy. Listen, I've talked to him where he's been. He's suffering from communication. I don't know to avoid jail, right? I mean, listen. I think things should have been worked out prior to trial. That maybe there's some kind of miscommunication. I don't know. I think Eldon is. is uh, he's suffering from PTSD. That's clear. The poor guy. Listen, I've talked to him where he's Rewind. been crying. Listen, you know, he did the deed. Free Karen Reed, please. Free Karen Reed. There you and go. Free me that's, next, that's please. Excellent. It sounds like he's talking about All right, Elvin. Elvin. Thank you. This is, this is his guest. So much. I about appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's just give it a okay. listen. Let's give it a chance here. Well, listen, you know, he did the deed. Let's face it. He did the deed, right? Um, I have to admit, um, he's a man of principle. All right. Go back. I mean, 120. He even said, right. knowing what he know, he went through. No. Absolutely. Did I see the guy that was on the stand? On the stand. Was he at the warehouse that night? I believe I believe I did see that guy. I believe I did see I do believe he was there, but he wasn't the man on the other side of the door. I promise you that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So end of story is you get convicted. Yeah. 
I ended up getting yeah. convicted because I didn't have a defense. I didn't have a, a, an attorney that. That's where I'm at. Present I'm, I'm at 120. To the case. It was, it was the probably the, the most ineffective assistance of counsel that you could ever in your life want. It was a nightmare. And I can prove that's that. where I was. All right, hold on. Let me I have that again. Every, I have every last piece of evidence in Kevin Reddington's own handwriting. Of um, says that says a lot, right? Because I mean, how many people have taken Is it the, the deal, wrong video, right? And and have pled guilty to avoid jail, right? All right, I was I was told it was on. Okay, I was told it was on this video. Right video. Okay. I'm just looking at the chat. I'm going by I'm going by the majority here. What's up, Sleuthy Goosey? Hey, big round of applause for Sleuthy Goosey for uh sparking that lighting that spark, man, for uh for Rachel Morin's uh, discoverer of her remains. Um, all right. So, all right, I have... All right, yeah, this is the right video, and I'm at the right time. Got it. Okay. It's on this video when guest is on and more at the end. Okay. All right. So everybody's right then. So go back to the 120 mark. All right. I'm going to go back to the 120 mark. We're going to see what happens. You get convicted. Yeah. Yeah. I ended up getting yeah. convicted because I didn't have a defense. I didn't have a, a, an attorney that even presented a case. It was it was the probably. All right. This is this is what I'm doing. I'm getting 120 and I'm getting 154. Both are very specific. I'm assuming both times address the issue that we're trying to address here on this live stream at the moment, because I, I want to be able to get to Plevin and I want to be able to get to cough and Duff. So. <laughs> I'm going to play both. Okay. It's going to save time from me switching back and forth. The, the most ineffective assistance of counsel that you could ever in your life want. It was a nightmare. And I can prove right. that. Yeah. I have right. every, I have every last piece of evidence <laughs> in Kevin Redding's own handwriting. Okay. All right. Hey, uh, Aiden, I want to I want to respond to you. Okay. I'm a federal agent for 35 years. When people get out of jail, I don't talk to them. Okay. True colors. This is the true colors, Aiden. I I disowned you, your devices. I'm not getting caught because I can't trust you, Aiden. I don't know if you're working for someone. You sure. want to bring your laundry to my show? That's fine. I let all your crew know, Richie, the whole thing. So, Aiden, here's the bottom line. I know better. I don't trust anyone that comes out of jail. I'm sorry, pal. You brought it to my show. This is the last chance you're going to get. I'm sorry. When people come out of jail, my experience is don't trust anyone until you can be trusted. You want to come down to Naples? We'll have a little talk. I'll search you. I'm not going on your phone. I'm not going on your devices. Because you gave people up, Aiden. You exposed informants. You exposed people that will never trust you. And I'm I'm the first one. So do you like this drama? Do you like this drama, Aiden? I don't trust you. And I'm not going to have it. So there it is. And I'm the idiot. I'm showing true colors. I'll see you. Good, Aiden. Good, uh, Eldon. All right. Let me see what the uh, comments were saying. Go ahead, Eldon. Go ahead. I apologize for whatever just happened there. Um, uh, no, I okay. just had to address I, I, I'm not sure where I was. I, okay. I understand. Yeah. Totally understand. 
right. All right. Um, all right, go ahead. Basically, you got, you got convicted. All right, let's go to the 154. Did you I get did, convicted? I got convicted? Yeah, listen, I've talked to him where he's been crying at tears. And I just, listen, I just want to give him some type of... Um, um, and I'm not talking right now because I don't fucking know what to say. But I'm sure I'm... <laughs> let me just let this play. Some type of platform so he could just at least reach maybe one person out there in this chat or whatever, in YouTube land or X or Facebook that can say, Sean, I can, I can direct him. I can get him in an area that can help him right this wrong, okay? I, listen, I'm not here pointing fingers at my old colleagues. I'm not pointing fingers at Kevin Reddington. I just think something, something didn't happen right, okay? Okay, uh, <laughs> hold on for a minute. Let's address the elephant in the room. Is everyone ready? All right, everyone ready? All right, listen. Until about 20 minutes ago, there was absolutely, absolutely no problem between Aiden Carney and myself. Okay, none. Um, okay, wait a second. What? About 20 minutes ago, there was absolutely listen. Until about 20 minutes ago, there was absolutely, absolutely no problem between Aiden Carney and myself. Okay. Okay. I got to point this out, though, that it would be irresponsible of me to go over this and not point this out. That can't be true. That can't be true. Because the way that he went off on him, the way that I just heard him go off on him, I still don't have any real thoughts about that. But when he's mentioning after I heard that and after he just said what he said, that until 20 minutes ago, there was no problem between us. That's not what that sounded like at all. That sounded like there was some shit brewing inside Sean and it came out. And I... I'm not I'm not former law enforcement, but I know people. I've seen shit. I've been into it with people. You know what I'm saying? That shit was stewing, whatever it was. Now, that wasn't, we didn't have a problem until 20 minutes. No, no, that there was a problem there. There was definitely a problem there. None. Um, when he got arrested the last time, okay, I understood he threw his phone. I was, listen, I, I sent a message to Aiden on Christmas Day, Merry Christmas, Aiden. And he wrote back to me, Merry Christmas. That was the last time, okay? Now, listen, um, I have worked 35 years 28 years were getting people in and out of jail, turning people from jail, turning people against people who are in jail. And not that I'm saying that I feel Turtle Boy flipped or Turtle Boy is working for anyone. It's just a personal decision on my part, okay? Now, if you listen to all the other people like Kevin, Wait. they're putting me, not Turtle Boy, jail, turning people from jail, turning people against people who are in jail. And not that I'm saying that I feel Turtle Boy flipped or Turtle Boy is working for anyone. It's just a personal decision on my part. Okay. Now, if you listen to all the other people like Kevin, they're putting me and Olivia as targets, right? Because we conspired with Karen and uh, Aiden and all this stuff. And so, you know, when you put things together, why would I violate something that I told my own guys? I told my own guys, be very leery of people who come out of jail. It's just something that we know. And, and, and maybe... I got to rewind this again. You guys are going to hate me. 
Uh, I got distracted by a comment in chat. Um, so, but um, I had to go check something, so I have to rewind this a little bit. It's just a personal decision on my part, okay? Now, if you listen to all the other people like Kevin, they're putting me and Olivia as targets, right? Because we conspired with Karen and uh, Aiden and all this stuff. And so, you know, when you put things together, why would I violate something that I told my own guys? I told my own guys, be very leery of people who come out of jail. It's just something that we know. And, and, and maybe nothing happens. Maybe something does happen. But why would I, why would I give up something that I've lived by for so long. So I want to give people a little bit of reasons why I am the way I am. Okay. Turtle, you just got out of jail. Right. And this kid really didn't have much to do with me at all. Right. We went our separate ways back in the summer. He did a live on me after some stupid football game talking about, you know, why I didn't come over. Listen, I could care less. Right. That's his, that works for him. It's fine. Okay. We had nothing. We didn't have any really contact. We just, we just re mutually, ha I thought I had mutual respect for his, his uh, reasons. And I respected my reasons. Okay. Um, I was trying to get out of Eldon. Okay. Eldon, what's the first thing you did when you got out of jail? Right. I mean, he didn't get the thing, but you know, he went home to be with his kids. All right. And I tried to say, would you be calling up any of your old friends just out of, getting out of jail? That would be very suspicious, right? To, to say the McCanns or anyone else, because the McCanns didn't go to jail, right? They didn't. One of them obviously flipped, okay? So my, my whole premise is this. And like I said, don't take this any other way. I'm not accusing Turtle of anything. But when you just get out of jail and you reach out to me, that you've had absolutely zero contact with for, for months. That's odd. That's odd. That is odd. Okay. I don't know why it's so urgent. I think someone said he's trying too hard to contact me for what I, I I've got nothing. What do I got to offer? I don't have anything to offer. I'm just doing, I'm just doing this stuff. I'm doing corruption. I, I'm putting lunatics on, right? Right. That's what he said. I put a lunatic on. All okay. right. All right. So I got the gist of everything that I need as far as what I am going to choose to talk about as far as that goes. Um, whatever's going on between him and Turtle Boy is between him and Turtle Boy. I have no opinion on it. I am not interested in knowing the details between the two of them as far as their personal interactions go, as far as the behind the scenes interactions go. That is not what I'm here to do. Uh, I'm not interested. Um, what I will address, though, is whether or not I think Turtle Boy is an informant since that has been put out into the universe. Because the truth is, whether we like it or not, Sean put that out into the universe. <laughs> now, his reasons for doing it, I'm going to leave that between him and Turtle Boy. None of my business. Okay? Just not doing it. I'm not getting in the middle of that. What I am going to do, though, is since it is out there in the universe, I'm going to address it. So, um, Oh, Nick did. Okay. I, I don't know who did. I, I don't know, but it's out there and I didn't put it out there. So I'm going to address it. <laughs> so um, I, I, and honestly, I don't give a shit who did. That's again, that's a turtle boy thing. If he wants to handle that and however he chooses to handle that, that is nobody's place, but his. So this is a, 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 a delicate situation. Everything that's going on here, we're talking about a woman who's on trial for her life. We're talking about a community that believes that she's innocent. We're talking about a journalist who brought 
forth a lot of information to make most most of the information to make this community believe what we believe at this point. That is not anything to overlook in the slightest bit. Not even you can't even hint to overlooking that. That has to be taken into consideration. We also have to take into consideration that the penalty for violating his bail, if I remember correctly, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, okay? But if I remember correctly, because it was a while back, that the penalty for violating his bail, Turtle Boy's bail, was 60 days. So he served his 60 days. And I'm, I'm quiet now. I, I, I Listen, I don't give a shit what the fuck any of you... Let me make this very, very clear. I don't give a fuck what any of you say as far as me taking a side, who I'm doing this and saying this. I don't give a fuck what you think about that. Knock yourself out. That is exactly, I mean, one of the, that's one of the casualties of being a YouTube creator is people are going to say things about you and people are going to think things about you. And that is more than fine. That is more than fine. So before you start to, oh my God, Claire is defending Turtle Boy and, and he's shitting all over Sean or Claire is defending Sean and shitting all over Turtle Boy, uh, blah, 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 blah. If that's the kind of shit that, that makes your brain work, dude, that is, I, I feel sorry for you. If that's actually what stimulates you and that's actually what you think actually matters in this situation, then something's fucking wrong with you. You are a cunt. So, as far as Turtle Boy, again, I, it's 60 days, right? Is anybody, it is 60 days, right? That he had to serve. So, so far we've got a, a guy who, who is an independent journalist Started looking into this case. What's up, Olivia? It's good to see you. Um, started looking into this case and discovered a whole bunch of shit through some very aggressive tactics. Controversial tactics, even, I'll say. But nevertheless, these tactics have led to results. Results being that the FBI has conducted their own independent investigation and have confirmed some of the most important things that Turtle Boy has been saying in his reporting since he started covering this case. That is undeniable. That is absolutely undeniable. So you take that, you take that, and then you take the fact that he had bail. He was already out on bail. And the facts dictate that the person who he interacted with in order to violate his bail was there under very suspicious circumstances. There's that as well. So when his bail was revoked... There was this very trumped up situation going on. Very shady, at least. Shady that I believe even Sean would admit would be shady. When you have these players, such as Tully, such as Mello. And Tully, every time we see uh, Michael Morrissey in public, Tully's right there next to him. Oh, shit. I think we got a super chat. Super chat. I think we got a super chat. Super chat. Super chat. Super chat. Super chat. Super chat. I think we got a super chat. I think we. <laughs> Stephanie, thank you. I think you got a super chat. 
Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate you. Um, yeah. So uh, I, I'm not based. I, I, I'm thinking out loud here. Remember, this is the first time I'm listening to this. I'm thinking out loud here. Considering all of those things that I just that I just put on the table here. And then we have the fact that Turtle Boy is not in jail, okay? Just based on the rant that I heard at the hour and 20 minute mark, Turtle Boy is not in jail, okay? So um, we're weighing this fact against the other facts that I just put on the table. So Turtle Boy is not in jail. Turtle Boy is also, under Turtle Boy's own admission, they want him in jail. That he even expected to go back to jail to some degree when he went to his court hearing on Thursday. Uh oh. I think we got a super cat. Super cat. I think we got a super cat. Super cat. Super cat. Super cat. I think we got a super cat. Gary, thank you so much. I love your Billy the Kid shirt. Thank you. I love my Billy the Kid shirt too. Uh, he's uh, one of my uh, favorite uh, outlaws uh, to to ponder about uh, historical figures. Anyway, um, I used to be uh, when I was much younger. I had a lot of uh, um, interest in reading up on Billy the Kid. Todd, thank you so much. I just want to get on with the, the <laughs> what I'm talking about here because I don't want my words to be misunderstood. So, um, Todd, thank you. Sean did have Aiden's back when Nick started trashing Aiden's uh, uh, free care and read movement. I think both Sean and Aiden are both stand-up guys. Who is Nick? I We're not talking about um, – who's Nick? What Nick are we talking about? Because I don't want to even say the wrong Nick just to even put that out there. Because I don't. And you know what? Honestly, I don't I don't really care who Nick is. Um, okay, yeah. See, I don't even know who that is. I don't know that person. Oh, that's the Soros dude. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, got it. Got it. Okay. So all right. <laughs> oh my god yeah again yeah let me just stick to what i uh <laughs> as far as aiden being a, a an informant i i'm shooting that down i'm shooting that down um aiden has a good attorney like right here the the very guy we we listened to it by accident the very guy that he was interviewing, Sean was interviewing on his channel just now, said that he did time. Why? Because he didn't have good representation. He didn't have any, any representation. He said that. We were just listening to it. So, I mean, Aiden has Bradle. I, I, I just, you know, and this is the thing, and I'm not trying to take anything away from Sean. I think he was just heated for whatever reason. I don't know what was going on. I don't care what was going on. It's none of my business. But he was clearly heated at the fact that Aiden was in his chat saying what he said. And he highlighted it. He didn't want to ignore it. He addressed it. And But it's it sounded to me that Sean was saying basically that he just doesn't trust anyone based on his experience as a, as a law enforcement agent, that he doesn't trust people who get out on bail uh, or get out get out of jail. Um, but the thing is, is that he served his time. You know what I mean? Like he served, he served the time, uh, more time. I mean, even Bradel was trying to get him out. Bradel, Bradel filed for, for different, uh, motions to, to, to try to get him out. He did his job, but he served the full 60 days, sat there, could have taken a plea, but didn't. Okay. So if, the entire time, if the entire 
amount of time was 60 days that was the penalty for him violating his bail conditions well then i mean that's why he got out i, I mean I, I just don't see you you have to give me more than that you have to give me more than and this is no disrespect to sean then you're you're an experienced D dea agent you know what i mean i need more than that that to to jump to the conclusion that or or feel like you know oh that's suspicious that that aiden got out of jail i don't find it suspicious at all that's the whole reason everybody was standing out there cheering for him paying attention to every motion paying attention to every everything everybody was following turtle boy's case in real time. So I just didn't see anything in following all of it that seemed like, oh, wait a minute. Why is he getting out of jail? That's weird that he's getting out of jail. And nothing, not even the slightest little. So whatever's going on, I'm going to assume. I think it's safe. I, uh, let me put it like this. It is my opinion my personal opinion that whatever was said there is very personally driven. And that includes Turtle Boy's comment in his chat. So whatever's going on is between the two of them, obviously. But the issue that affects us all, which would be whether or not turtle boy is an informant and that's how he got out of jail i'm gonna say no i'm gonna say that no i i i just don't see it it doesn't it doesn't add up it doesn't add up and i need something to more than hey i'm an experienced law enforcement agent and i've seen things i need more than that than to to conclude for myself that that i need a side eye turtle boy whether or not he's an informant you know what i mean yeah and and yeah the nick dude i already stated man i mean the bottom line is that guy lost me when uh he said that he had three attempts on his life by the deep state and yet and he's sitting there on a YouTube channel, loud as shit, talking about Trump and talking about Biden. And he's got this very loud hat on, uh, I, you know, and, and he's still alive. I mean, the deep state tried to kill you three times. Like, I mean, dude, you must be the baddest badass of all badasses. If you're able to elude the deep state three times and currently every day because they're trying to kill you. I mean, I'm just not buying it, dude. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not going to get into it. Uh, <laughs> right. John Wick. Exactly. Uh, I'm not going to get into it. Uh, but my common sense dictates to me that the guy, uh, at the very least embellishes, uh, quite a bit of what he's saying. Um, so that's, that's all I'm going to go as far as, uh, turtle boy and, uh, as, and Sean, uh, I like Sean. I like turtle boy. Uh, sounds to me like they've got a personal thing between the two of them. Uh, if we're adults, we let the personal thing between the two of them work itself out between the two of them. Uh, I want nothing to fucking do with it. So. All right. And apparently Twattendoffer went. <laughs> so let's, I, I skipped through her like explanation um, and again, I haven't watched this yet, uh, but I, I, I did, there seemed to be an intro. And as I was skipping through it, I realized that she was, uh, also explaining K2 
kept keeping people up to speed on what supposedly happened that night uh, on or the early morning hours of the 29th of January, 2022. Um, now, uh, we all know what happened, so we don't need to hear her explain that shit like for the millionth time. Hold on. Oh, my God, lady. I mean, you're just... Boo, you suck. <laughs> she gets a double boo. They're not done yet. Y'all aren't done yet. I love it. <laughs> specifically regarding how much they drank. But when it comes to Karen Reed, the numbers are between seven and nine drinks and in a very small period of time. Now I mean, but you're saying that like it's fact. You're saying that like it's fact. That's already the problem, is you're saying that like it's fact. It's That's just what this bartender supposedly said. And you're not even taking into consideration whether or not she was carrying them for other people, which is perfectly... Now, here's the thing, and I've stated this before. Do I think Karen Reed was drunk? Fuck yes, absolutely. I absolutely believe that Karen Reed was intoxicated that night. 100%. If I, if I think that Karen Reed lied about anything, it was when she was on Dateline. I think it was Dateline. And said that she only had four drinks. I don't believe that shit for a second. Um, but it doesn't matter because she didn't hit John with her car. So, you know, if you want to give her a DUI, I don't give a shit. Uh, but what I'm saying is she didn't hit him with her car, but she was fucking drunk. <laughs> now, Karen Reed is not a large woman. She apparently has a decent drink tolerance because after she drank all of that, she was the one that actually drove in her Lexus SUV with her boyfriend at that time, John O'Keefe, uh, to a residence in Canton. Now, this residence was owned by an individual named Brian Albert. And I should say John O'Keefe was a Boston police officer and a very well-respected guy. Somehow, John O'Keefe, which seems to always happens with these victims, has really been forgotten in all of this. He adopted both his I niece love, and nephew. I love hearing her say this shit. I love it. I love hearing her say this shit because, like, she will always do that. She'll say, she'll, she'll do it in the same tweet. Where she'll be like, John O'Keefe has been forgotten in all of this. And then she'll start fucking ranting about Turtle Boy. And then you're like, why do you think people have forgotten about John O'Keefe? Why do you think that is? I mean, <laughs> like, it's, it's clearly a, an attempt at mean, manipulation. Because what she's saying is, you know, if you're not on board with Karen Reed being guilty, well, then you don't care about John O'Keefe. That's the message there. And it's it's not even slick. It's not even slick. He came in, a single dad, a police officer, and assumed responsibility for them. Obviously, a very unselfish person. But beyond that, he was just so well liked. I really hope you all do some research on him because you will see posting after posting of just how well regarded John O'Keefe was. Yeah. Like again, guys, I didn't watch this, so I didn't know that was going to happen. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty fucking irresponsible. Former FBI lady who cares so much about John O'Keefe and his kids that you're going to fucking blast their faces all over 
minors, you're going to blast their faces all over fucking uh, YouTube. Nice lady. Moving from John O'Keefe now back to the facts of this particular evening. This particular night ended up being one of the worst blizzards ever to hit <laughs> Canton. They had over 20 inches of snow, over 20 inches of snow. It was freezing cold. And the house they went to was actually a really, really nice house in Canton owned by Brian Albert. Now, Brian Albert and his buddy, an ATF agent, also named Brian, Brian Higgins, they had gone to New York City for area for a funeral. And they were at home. What's really funny here is she's like making Brian Albert, Higgins, and everybody look so fucking sinister with this fucking ominous ass music that she's playing on top of everything else with the <laughs> with like the worst pictures, too. And these like flamey like transitions. Like, what are you doing, lady? Like, look at this shit. Look. Ooh freezing the nice house in Canton owned by Brian Albert. Now, Brian Albert and his buddy, an ATF agent, wow, also named Brian, Brian Higgins, they had gone to New York City. Bro, they don't look like good guys, bro. You know what I mean? They don't look like the good guys in this video. That's not my fault. <laughs> That's not my doing. I didn't do that. That's her. She did that shit. Like, she's the one who added the music. Like, <laughs> like if I'm watching this video and I'm asking myself, you know, I wonder if Karen Reed is innocent. And then you show those guys, I'm going, hmm, what's up with those guys? <laughs> wow, lady for area for a funeral and they were at home because brian albert's son was actually uh celebrating a birthday and this was a small gathering you know about a dozen people uh family and friends and they were there really just celebrating at his home and they had invited john o'keefe and karen reed when they were out uh to join them in other words some of the people that the that John O'Keefe was with and Karen Reed was with were invited, uh, specifically a lady named Jen McCabe. And so Jen McCabe said, come on, join us. We're just having a little get together over at Brian. You see how the fucking music got all tense? Bro, this is not doing you any favors at all with your narrative, lady. You see how fucking intense the music got as soon as she said Jen McCabe? Like... <laughs> It's the funniest shit ever, bro. Oh my god, I'm loving this. Was with were invited, uh, we specifically go. a lady named Jen McCabe. And so Jen McCabe said, "Come on, join us. We're just having a little get together over at Brian Alberts." So everybody went over there. Uh, the McCabe's and others arrived earlier. Um, and John O'Keefe and Karen Reed came after the others had arrived. It's snowing, it's very cold out, and Karen Reed does not pull in the driveway. There's a series of text messages where Jen McCabe is reading. Um, according to Jen McCabe's statement, Karen Reed pulls into the driveway, pulls into the driveway, then pulls out, and then pulls alongside of the house, according to Jen McCabe's statement reaching out to uh john o'keefe you know kind of telling him where to park oh park here you know but what happens that is completely unsuspected is that karen reed and john o'keefe get into an argument on the way to the alberts and there's going to be recordings there are recordings of Girl. her anger and hate toward John. And hate is the word that is used. <laughs> She's 
livid. And I know this was likely all exacerbated by her alcohol intake, but nevertheless, that was the state of mind she was in when she dropped off John O'Keefe. She drove him there. That seems to be one fact that not- Bro, like, I can't imagine, dude, like, When I hear her talk, man, I feel like she's never had an exciting relationship in her entire life. It's just a personal opinion based on my observations. Like, I just get that vibe from her that she has never had an exciting relationship in her entire life. Like, it, it's crazy. Neither the defense or the prosecution uh, that stands in dispute. But what is in dispute is whether John O'Keefe went inside. I mean, that's the nicest. Now, that's the nicest way I could put it. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's that's the nicest way I could put it. Like if you could like read between the lines of what I mean, <laughs> you know. Well, it's in dispute, but he did not go inside. How do I know that? because all the witnesses inside the house have said he did not go in the house. Karen Reed. All the witnesses inside the house have been caught on multiple lies. And has said so many different statements. Uh, she has spoken publicly on various news programs. Uh, she has spoken to Boston Magazine. She has spoken in public on the courthouse stairs. Said it feels we're the only ones fighting for the truth of what happened to John O'Keefe. And me and my family and my attorneys and my team have marshaled every resource to get to the truth. Just feels like no one else wants it. Okay, just be clear, you didn't do it. And I can tell you from interviewing individuals for decades, Thousands of interviews. When you ask that question, it's so telling. Uh, specifically in this case, because she was a little caught off guard. The response for somebody who doesn't do it, 100% of the time, I can almost say, okay, I won't say 100%. I will say 99% <laughs> of the time. Okay. Is no. And usually not only no, but hell no. No, no, no. I, didn't. I mean, I'll agree with her on that. You know? I'll agree with her on that. I mean, 99% is probably a high number, but that's splitting hairs because I would say something like 95, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, but like, that's true. These are this, there's a lot of weird shit about this case. No doubt about that. And yes, it's absolutely weird in a way that she would say, you know, I, I hit him, I hit him, you know, asking, even asking to not even be sure. But not so much if you're dealing with somebody who is highly intoxicated, which I believe that Karen Reed was absolutely highly intoxicated. I believe she was highly intoxicated. And I do believe that she, uh, I, I do believe that she was not absolutely totally sure. And I do believe that her mind did not go to somebody murdered him. She didn't think anybody had any reason to murder him. You know what I'm saying? She didn't have any reason. She, I mean, she's wondering where the hell he is. He's laying after they go look for him. She's freaking out. She calls Jen. They go out driving around looking for him with Carrie in the car. And they backtrack all the way back to 34 Fairview and he's laying in the lawn. So, I mean, it's uh, to explore the possibility and to be the type of person who is is naturally someone who takes accountability, which is a rare thing, but I've seen it happen. Who just takes accountability, who just goes, oh, my God, you know, she had no other reason to think anything else. So. That's not necessarily an admission. That's that's the fuck. I, I don't know what else makes sense. 
And I know that some people are listening going, exactly, nothing else makes sense. No, I'm saying that at the time, that didn't, nothing else made sense because she had no reason to think that him being inside that house, something violent would have happened and then they would just dump his body out in the lawn. She did not think that. The first thing she's going to think is not something nefarious. The first thing that she's going to think is that he got hit by a car. He's right by the road. Did I hit him with the car? Did I not realize it? She's already hysterical. She's She was on top of him, trying to give him CPR. So there's all kinds of reasons why. I mean, if I'm a defense attorney and I'm arguing that point, this is how I'm going to address the jury to some degree. I'm going to be like, I'm, I'm going to explain all kinds of different possible reasons as to why Karen Reed might say those words out loud. It doesn't necessarily make it an, admis an admittance of guilt. There's all kinds of other possibilities. So I'm not going to just sit here and, <laughs> you know, like let her say that that there's that that's an admission it's it's not that is that that right there is is one example as i like to say a drop in the bucket of things that once is once the prosecution presents to the jury the defense can easily poke holes through it easily that's why i'm shocked that this is going to trial See, I'm shocked that this is going to trial still from the from the perspective of being a juror. When I cover cases, when I talk about cases, I try to picture myself as a juror. And I'm thinking with everything that I'm seeing and everything the prosecution is presented to be evidence, none of it's credible. Especially now that Proctor is under an internal investigation. That's that's going to bother me. This guy was the lead detective. That's going to that's that's going to bother me. But once it's explained to me why Proctor is under investigation, there's no fucking way on heaven, earth or hell or any other surrounding realm. There is no other what there is no fucking way that I am going to convict Karen Reed as a juror. There's no way. Because there's just nothing. There's just nothing. Like nothing that could be <laughs> This is crazy to me that that somebody who claims to be former FBI can't see it like that. Like, how many trials has she sat on the stand for? I have to assume that she is a paid mouthpiece for the for the Commonwealth. I have to assume that she's a paid mouthpiece for Michael Morrissey's office. I, I'm not saying that she is, and I have any proof of that. I'm saying that's my opinion based on using my own common sense. Using my own common sense, I'm going to say that someone with her experience because it's a bad look on the FBI as a whole that they even gave her a paycheck steadily. It's a bad look on the FBI as a whole. So I'm going to assume that she wasn't that stupid when she was with the FBI. She can't be this stupid. It makes more sense that she's a paid mouthpiece, especially with that email that we're aware of that she's a paid mouthpiece for the uh, Norfolk County District Attorney's Office. I mean, that's 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 just what makes the most sense. Not I, again. I don't have any proof of that. It's just an opinion. I didn't do it. Watch her response. We know who did it, Steve. We know, and we know who spearheaded this cover up. You all know. Yes, we do. And no, she didn't do it. She's taken aback. She gives kind of an ugly, wrinkly face. 
she pauses a, a extended period of time for a question that should have been easily answered and says something words to the effect of, you know who did it. How does this make her look guilty? That's, that's what I want to know. Let's watch, let's watch Karen read one more time and let's watch Twat and Doffer's reaction. Yeah. Watch her response. We know who did it, Steve. We know. And we know who spearheaded this cover-up. You all know. Yes, we do. And no, she didn't do it. She's taken aback. She gives kind of an ugly, wrinkly face. And it, is it Steve the guy from Channel 5? Am I wrong about that? Somebody correct me, please, in the chat. Okay, so so Steve's, Steve's the dude from Channel 5, right? And is it Steve... Uh, not five yes, but Boston News. Okay. So who's the guy that that has the same lawyer? Uh, so it's Boston News that has the same lawyer as who? Chris Albert. Brian Albert's attorney. Okay. So Steve works for the news company that has the uh that has the same attorney as brian albert's attorney right okay see i'm getting different answers in the chat so that's what i thought okay so it's not steve that's what i was trying to confirm it's not steve then steve is not does not work for the the news the news station that has the same attorney as Brian Albert. Just wanted to clear that up. Okay, thank you. She pauses a, yeah, that, a extended that music ugly... too much. Is that music? She's taken aback. She gives kind of a ugly, wrinkly face. She pauses a, a extended period of time for a question that should have been easily answered, and says something words to the effect of, "You know who did it." Later on on those courtroom stairs, you know, within a few seconds, her attorney actually gives the right answer. No, no, she didn't do it. Because he realizes too, he sees the faux pas there. He sees that she couldn't answer the question. Moving. So you're saying, no, no. She was probably instructed by her attorneys to not say who she thinks did it. Because you don't have any proof. So when she says, you know who did it, Steve, she probably meant the people inside 34 Fairview. Somebody in there did that shit. You know what I mean? Like, we all know it at this point. There's like no question about it at this point. Like, let's, let's just fucking be real. An independent federal investigation took place and has eliminated basically any smoking gun evidence that they claim to have against Karen Reed. The opposition motions did not even deny this. The opposition motions just ended up uh, just basically doing what she does, which is saying something out loud and expecting it to be real. After the defense just pointed out all of these things, these bombshells that the the. Federal investigation contains findings that could very well exonerate Karen Reed, if not absolutely do. So, and what's funny is, is here she is after the fact, just looking so cheerful, by the way. I mean, look at, just look at that face. Look at that, look at that disposition, y'all. I mean, <laughs> Mira, mira se cara. Yo, lady. Moving back to the specifics of that night, 
why is so much in controversy if she supposedly dropped him off? Well, there are several sources, or I should say two particular sources of information that's digital in nature regarding John O'Keefe's movement. I had to speed one, her up. And this is the one that matters. It's a cell phone. It's a cell phone information. Where did that cell phone move? Where did it go? And for those of you who have watched any of these trials, like the Alex Murdoch trial, perfect example. The teams that analyze these phones, this is what they do. I can tell you in the FBI, a cast team agent, they have literally, for instance, the one that testified in Murdoch, they spend their life doing that. So some of us spend our life working investigations. So in federal cases, you know, the ones that you investigated and 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 helped prosecute by sitting on the stand and giving your expert opinion and giving your expert testimony, right? So in federal cases, are you going to tell me that a federal expert doesn't know what the fuck they're doing? Hmm. Are you going to tell me you're going to sit there as a former federal agent and tell me that a federal expert doesn't know what the fuck he's doing? I mean, being case agents, when I say our life, our day in and day out, you know, 16 hour days, sometimes certainly 10 hour, 12 hour days, we're investigating our cases. And these guys are understanding and working with digital forensics information from cell phones. They are the unequivocal experts. They are going to be able to tell you where that phone went. And in fact, they've already said, they said that phone was with John O'Keefe. And in fact, found along or under actually John O'Keefe's body. So what is the confusion? Well, there's some Apple information that showed, quote unquote, he climbed three flights of stairs. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. I can't talk about how. And I hate to make jokes like this, but I mean, these theories are just so fucking stupid. Like you just can't help it. I mean, come on, like John O'Keefe, you're going to tell me that Karen hits him with the car and he's got his cell phone in his hand or much less in his pocket, but most likely in his hand, right? And she hits him with the car and he falls back and he goes, ah, 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 and puts it like under his back. I mean, come on, lady. Let's get real. Why? John O'Keefe was facing up and his phone was found under his back. How does it get there? How does it get there? Stairs. It's ridiculous. The timestamp on that Apple information was actually when they hadn't even arrived, according to the Waze information. So Waze is saying they're still driving. They're still, it's programmed. They're driving from the bar to Brian Albert's house. And yet this Apple Watch information is saying he climbed stairs. Well, anyone familiar with the Apple Watch, this is not have the scientific certainty, the digital certainty and timestamp of a cellular telephone information. So and it's contradicted by the cellular telephone. No, no. In some cases, it's more accurate. You know, like ascending and descending. Like it's on your wrist. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's Apple. Like my Apple health on my phone, if it's in my fucking pocket, by the way, if it's in my pocket, I don't have an Apple watch, but I have an Apple phone. I think an Apple watch is just the most pointless fucking thing in the world. And I don't like things on my wrist anyway. Um, but an Apple, like my phone, my, my Apple health data is almost always accurate. Like I have stairs in my house, tells me when I ascend or descend a hill, keeps track of all my steps. I mean, like when I'm at the gym, I actually keep my phone in my pocket. I used to lay it down, but I realized that I pace a lot in between sets. So when I pace, I want those steps accounted for. Those are fucking steps. I don't want to waste them. You know what I mean? So I have them pick them up. 
but I mean, they're accurate. It's accurate. Like every time I've climbed, I've, I've checked to see if, 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 you know, when I've climbed and up, up and down the steps and if it detected it after this issue came up and it absolutely did. It was perfectly, it was, it was incredibly accurate. So, I mean, she's sitting here trying to say that data is not <laughs> accurate, but the cell phone data is. But, I mean, that is the cell phone data. It's the same. It's Apple Health. It's an iPhone. That's the cell phone's data. What do you mean? lady it's not an app that he downloaded it's the apple health data that's that's what his phone is is tracking the whole point is to track how many stairs you climb and how many so you're sitting here and you're trying to convince people saying that this is that this is uh this is not accurate the apple health data isn't accurate but the gps accurate uh, data is more accurate Okay. Uh, telephone information and by the ways information. And by the fact, so we think he went inside and started running up and down stairs by the way before he ever arrived at the house. So that information just needs to be disregarded. The other information that he went inside the house does not exist. It doesn't exist. Now, Karen Reed, as I've said, has said from time to time, depending on what interview you watch, that she went inside the house, that he went inside the house. Self-serving statement. Of course, she's going to want to say he went inside the house, even though all the other individuals inside the house are going to say he did not go inside the house. So what happened? What happened was Karen Reed backed up and hit John O'Keefe. How do we know that? I love to know how you know that. We know that from the evidence that never lies, it never lies because it never speaks. And that evidence is the taillight information, her taillight on her Lexus SUV. Wait, what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> did you just fucking, hold on. You did not just fucking say that out loud. <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm, she didn't say what I just think she said. <laughs> John O'Keefe. How do we know that? We know that from the evidence that never lies. It never lies because it never speaks. And that evidence. <laughs> the, the evidence never lies because it never speaks. What do you mean? The evidence is supposed to be when it comes to someone being, I don't know, on trial for their life. Um, the evidence has to speak loudest than anything or anyone. I would think. I thought that's how the justice system worked. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, I thought that the evidence is supposed to speak loudest than anything else. Former FBI lady. It is the taillight information, her taillight on her Lexus SUV. It's broken when she hits him. Further, tiny fragments and particles from that tail light get embedded in his clothing. Mm. Tiny, tiny fragrance, tiny fragments from the tail light get embedded in his clothing. Well, yeah, we know that tiny fragments got embedded in his clothing. The question is, is how did they get there? That's how you have to prove that they got there by Karen Reed's car hitting John O'Keefe because there's a big, big gap in something called chain of custody when it comes to that evidence. A big gap. There's a big problem with that taillight evidence. That taillight evidence is, <laughs> is screaming. That taillight evidence is speaking loudest because 
Evidence doesn't lie, but evidence doesn't lie because it speaks the loudest. That's what makes it evidence. And that evidence is that you cannot rely on what the prosecution is calling evidence because we don't know how those fragments got in there because there were five undocumented searches of that taillight. Of, of findings of that taillight. Five undocumented searches by an investigator who is now being investigated, both federally and internally. I mean, so there is no fucking way, again, if I'm a juror, there's no fucking way if a defense attorney were to make me aware of that particular detail. There's no way that I would convict Karen Reed. Absolutely no fucking way. And are discovered through scientific analysis. That's going to be a linchpin in this case. In addition, linchpin. there's DNA linchpin. on the back of that vehicle. Now, people can say, well, of course, they're boyfriend and girlfriend. He must have been touching the back of that vehicle. Well, Holla! yeah, I've said that. You know why I said it? Because I bet you a fucking thousand other people were thinking the same. Thing. I'm just here to say it shows he did indeed touch the back of the vehicle. And when you keep the totality of the circumstances in mind, it makes sense that his DNA would be on there. There was also a hair found on the back of the vehicle. Now, there's been reporting, including mine, based on an NBC article that the hair has been scientifically matched to John O'Keefe. However, according to recent court filings, it's still being analyzed, so we don't know. We don't know if that's John O'Keefe's hair yet. In addition, there is going to be information from the vehicle itself. Finally, there's the information that is gleaned from John O'Keefe's body. Now, according to two medical examiners who actually looked at John O'Keefe's body, he has injuries. You mean the medical examiners that didn't even take samples? You mean the medical examiners that got a phone call from Buchanan? I mean, is it standard? I mean, I'm going to ask a medical examiner if I'm a defense attorney in this case. Is it standard for the medical examiner to not take samples of every wound of a, a police officer who clearly died of suspicious circumstances? I mean, so right there, their credibility's fucked. Gone, done. If I'm a juror, I don't give a shit what these medical examiners have to say. I mean, <laughs> and then don't even like get me started on what's going to end up happening once they pull, once they put up an expert that's going to say that those are dog, that, that those wounds came from a dog attack and that there was, again, th those, there were no samples taken. It's not that the, the results got lost or they, they, you know, it didn't test for K9 DNA. It's that they didn't even sample the wounds in order to test them. What medical examiner doesn't do that? Consistent with being hit by a vehicle. Furthermore, he doesn't have any injuries. Hold on. What? Consistent with being hit by a vehicle. He has injuries consistent with being hit by a vehicle. I love that. Except the problem with that statement is that a federal expert stated specifically, you know, federal, like who you used to work for, federal. A federal expert stated that his injuries are not consistent with a vehicle hitting him. They're just not. 
with three PhDs, right? But I guess, you know, federal experts don't count. Because, dude, you guys understand why I feel like this woman is 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 a pain in for there's no way that somebody could be if you're this stupid then you can't even put your fucking socks on the right feet <laughs> you can't do it you're 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 like which which one which one instead of just putting on your socks try to figure out which feet your socks go on that's that's the kind of brain capacity that we're dealing with when we're listening to this or we're dealing with somebody who is just a fucking liar. We're dealing with somebody here who is a mouthpiece for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, for the Norfolk County DA's office. That's what I believe. Again, that's my opinion. But I, I just don't see someone being this stupid and having a career in law enforcement. I don't see it. <clears throat> it doesn't make sense. Because here she is. What other motive would she have for standing, for sitting up there and discrediting the very agency that she's using the name of to get credibility for anything she says to have any weight behind it? Why would she sit up here and completely blow off the fact that a federal expert through their own independent federal investigation, concluded that John O'Keefe's injuries are not consistent with being hit by a vehicle. She won't even acknowledge that. And yet she works, or she claims, the FBI, because she worked for them. She claims them. But... Yet she's not giving them any credit at all. She's put out two videos in response to the hearing that took place where we learned all this. Furthermore, he doesn't have any injuries that are indicated from a fight. There's no DNA from anyone else. There are no punch marks. There's no defensive wounds. There's no fighting that went on at all. People want to look at the fact that John O'Keefe has what they call raccoon eyes, which are the dark circles around the orbit of the eyes. But guess what? That's what happens when you have your school cracked. No, that's what and can school happen. Was cracked. That's what can happen. That's what can happen when you have your skull cracked. So in that sense, I... I I, I, I've never put a whole lot of weight on the two black eyes so much. Um, me personally, I have not. Because that, again, it, once I heard that can actually happen from uh, a skull fracture uh, in the back of the head, okay, we know that he suffered from this. So um, the two black eyes, that could be that, period. But <laughs> I still think I still think that the injuries to his arm were a dog attack. Um, I still think that the injuries to his, um, the, the, the fact that he didn't suffer any injuries below what the waist. Uh, I, I just, yeah, I don't, I don't buy it. I don't understand why there was vomit on his boxers, but not on his pants. I don't understand that. Um, there, there's too many suspicious things about John O'Keefe. Way too many suspicious things about what happened to John O'Keefe. Um, and and these things are so overwhelming. These these these, these are so many overwhelm. There, there's such an overwhelming amount of things that are suspicious about John O'Keefe's death that if you boil it down to Karen Reed hitting him with her SUV, it's clearly an, over, an oversimplification, to say the least. It's clearly an oversimplification, which right away would lead me to believe that she did not hit him with the SUV. 
impact due to the impact of that vehicle and likely with the impact of that frozen solid ground that he hit. In addition, the defense has made Wait. a lot frozen solid due to events when you have your skull cracked and his skull was cracked due to the impact of that vehicle and likely with the impact of that frozen solid ground that he hit. Okay. No fucking way. No fucking way. Do I think that the ground was so hard that it caused a fracture to the back of John O'Keefe's head? There's no fucking way that I believe that the grass was so frozen that it cracked John O'Keefe's head. Much less do I believe that the, 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 the frozen blades of grass cut his arm up. Not even a little bit. So, right there. So she is, he's absolutely like stating that <laughs> she's she's acknowledging that he did not hit the concrete, that he, he he that the impact to the back of his head was on the grass, on the grassy yard. There's no fucking way that you're going to convince me that 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 skull fracture came from a skull fracture that 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 caused both of his eyes to be black raccoon eyes. I, I no from that impact. No, no, I'm sorry. In addition, the defense has made a lot about some scratches that are on John O'Keefe's arm. Now, this I got here. If you look at the original photo that, by the way, was leaked by the defense, this should be pointed out because when you have a leaked photo, it's not even the actual photo that would ever be put into evidence. They can be uh, tainted, they can be um, messed with, uh, they can be changed. Okay, 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 okay. Some scratches. Okay. <laughs> what, lady? that are on John O'Keefe's arm. Now, these scratches, if you look at the original photo that, by the way, was leaked by the defense, this should be pointed out because when you have a leaked photo, it's not even the actual photo that would ever be put into evidence. They can be uh, tainted, they can be um, messed with, uh, they can be changed and altered so that what you see isn't really the original markings that were on that arm. But nevertheless, <laughs> I love how she acknowledges the evidence that would be coming from the defense that it could be tainted. It could be, but I mean, I think that's insane because just because the, the, the photo was leaked, it doesn't matter if they could provide the metadata of that photo and that that photo was taken from the hospital where John O'Keefe was laying, if they can confirm that metadata, then no. But the thing is, is like, it's not on them to prove that. It's not on them to prove it. It doesn't even matter. They may or may not even present that photograph. You know what I mean? They may or may not even do it. They may, may or may not even deal with the whole dog situation when it comes to the trial, if it, it even goes to trial. They, <laughs> the, the, the fact is, is that you, you're sitting here talking about this photograph, but and you're talking about how it could be altered and how it could be manipulated because it was leaked. But again, if you could provide the metadata, that doesn't matter. But here you are talking about this, but you're not acknowledging you're not acknowledging any of the lack of chain of custody in almost all of the evidence, if not all of the evidence that the prosecution is planning to use against Karen Reed. You won't even acknowledge that. 
when all of it can be discredited. All of it can be discredited. The arm was examined by medical examiners who said, these are scrapes and scratches. They're not even deep, superficial. And they were made by a blunt object. Blunt object meaning, you know, steel, something solid. Not by a dog. No, man. Hold on. Hold on a second. <laughs> okay, people. <laughs> Let's listen to what she says here and what she thinks a blunt object means. Tapes and scratches, they're not even deep, superficial, and they were made by a blunt object. Blunt object meaning, you know, steel, something solid. Okay. Not by a dog. Okay, so what she's saying here is that a blunt object means something firm enough, sharp enough to cut them. Right? Something like steel. Steel being sharp. Right? Because already she's also giving a, a, a theory as to how he got that steel. Steel what? What part of, what piece of steel? And so what she's implying here is that the car and the steel part of the car hit him so hard that it caused those scratches on his arm. So it doesn't have to be sharp. It just has to be steel or it has to be. I mean, because I'm trying to give her the benefit of the doubt and, and, and think, OK, well, I mean, something sharp had to have done it. I mean, it caused these scratches. I mean, because nobody. I mean, a toddler would even understand this. Right. But just so. Just for her benefit, let me let me show you what the definition, the Collins Dictionary, uh, or let's see, let's see uh, what the 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 Webster Dictionary um, says here. The Webster Dictionary, Merriam-Webster Dictionary says, blunt instrument, an object without sharp edges or points that is used as a club, and then used in a sentence, he was hit over the head with a blunt instrument. So they even used murder as an example. <laughs> they even used a violent uh, act as an example to, to illustrate their definition for what blunt instrument is. That's what Webster did. And it says right here, an object without sharp edges or points. Without sharp edges or points. So please explain to me, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, please explain to me Norfolk County DA's office, Michael Morrissey, Lolly, Koffendoffer, please fucking explain to me how a blunt object caused all of those different scratches. Give me a scenario. I would, I cannot wait. See, this is one of those very superficial reasons that I would hope that this goes to trial. I don't want it to go to trial. I want Karen Reed to be able to move, move past this as soon as possible and move on with her life. That is the, the the true the true feelings that I have about this case, but there's these little parts of me that want us that want answers to certain things that only a trial would would provide me with. So, what are those that in that tiny little place inside me that feels that that wants this to go to trial? I want to know what the prosecution's explanation for how a blunt object could have caused those marks on John John O'Keefe's arm. I'm, I'm dying to know how a blunt object and a blunt and it, an object without sharp edges or points that is used as a club, right? I mean, the only place that he could have gotten hit by a fucking club would have been inside the house. So is that what the prosecution's going to go with? That he was 
hit with a club inside the house, not attacked by a dog, but hit by a club because the only place he could have gotten hit by a club is inside that fucking house. Karen Reed didn't hit him with a club. Prosecution's not saying that Karen Reed hit him with a club. Prosecution's saying that he, she hit him with a car. And a car is not a blunt object. It's a fucking two-ton, three-ton, barreling at you fucking projectile. Like, the fact that she doesn't see how ridiculous of a statement that is being made by the Commonwealth or a medical examiner, much less. Because if a medical examiner said that that was a blunt object, something's fucking wrong with that medical examiner. That medical examiner needs to quit. They need to retire. That's it. Because there's no fucking way that a blunt object made those markings on John O'Keefe's skin. Unless it was just a two by four that was riddled with fucking splinters. And they just kept hitting them like this with it. And it was scratching them. Oh, shit, stop. No, man, that's not what happened. Fucking dog got a hold of John O'Keefe's arm. I, there's, there's, and, and what's funny is one of the reasons why I am concluding that besides all of the facts that we know about Chloe, besides all that, right? I'm, I am coming to the conclusion that a dog bit him besides the fact that Melanie Little had a, dog training expert I'm going to come to, to the conclusion that a dog bit John O'Keefe based on the prosecution's insane theory their insane conclusion that that was done by a blunt object that makes me go okay it was a dog <laughs> after everything that I hear after I hear everything about Chloe, after I hear everything from Coffin, or Coffin, I'm sorry about that, Melanie Little, from Melanie Little's guest, uh, after, after the first time I even heard about it when I was live and I was going over it and I started and I Googled uh, dog, dog attacks, dog bite wounds, like... They were consistent. When I Google dog training and where they attack, right here. They bite right here. They're trained to. And that's where you see a clear bite mark on John O'Keefe, right around his elbow. Everything else is right here. Totally consistent with somebody going, get off me, get off me. Totally consistent with someone trying to pull away from a dog that's trying to pull him. So I, I, you're you got to do a hell of a lot better than a blunt object. There's no fucking way that was a blunt object. Dog, it's it's actually so interesting. One of the most interesting phenomena I've seen in this case is that people with no medical licenses. A lot of people with law degrees, people who never examined oh, John O'Keefe's body want to take shit. a picture that was. Shots fired, bro. That was totally a dig at fucking Melanie Little, if I ever heard one. Look at, you saw her face? Watch. Look at, watch, 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 watch. Hold on, they got to do this. This case is that. People with no medical licenses. Here we go. Here we go. A lot of people with law degrees. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. People who never examined John O'Keefe's body want to take a picture that was leaked. That could have been altered and whether it was or not altered and what i mean by altered you know made more red or made to be brighter marks the scratches that i saw in the original are very slight we'll show them here and they've become experts experts pathologists and have put forth i'm gonna say it, a ludicrous notion 
that these scratches are somehow dog bites. Now, mind you, somehow the dog, dog only had apparently the top chompers because you don't see the underside, you don't see puncture wounds. And what so, anyway, mean? this is just a very interesting piece his, of his whole fucking arm has puncture room wounds. What the fuck are you talking about, lady? Information that has spiraled from ridiculous into believed. One of the other reasons that people don't believe oh, John O'Keefe was hit by a car. Shit. Lady, gifted memberships. Oh, you are awesome. Thank Heather, uh, let's see, Shelly Babes, Heather Taylor, Miss Carrie, Marco, Kimberly. Congrats, guys. Congrats, congrats, congrats. Thank you, Lady D. Is they have put forth a conspiracy, a conspiracy hypothesis, not based on any facts, but a hypothesis that all the individuals in the house that were friends, acquaintances, fellow law enforcement officers, an ATF agent, a Boston cop, wives, children, that they all conspired. All the people in that house. Yep. About a dozen people to yep. kill John O'Keefe. No. Now why? Cover it up. On this particular night, Not for go. no particular reason, would these people do this? Well, that's been the trouble of the conspiracy theorists in this case, because they've had to sort of try to concoct something. See, but what she doesn't realize now, I'm not saying this because that's not what I believe. But what I'm saying is because I, I have to look at the evidence and the evidence dictates that, yes, I, I it's enough for me to come to the conclusion and believe and come form the opinion that, yes, everyone in that house is involved in covering it up. Absolutely. But. When she says what she's saying. That everybody that that we're saying that everybody conspired to kill John O'Keefe, it makes me wonder. It makes me wonder because I don't think that she's as stupid as she's making herself out to be. I really don't believe it. I don't think that she's that stupid. I think that she definitely knows more than what's being said. And it would make sense to me. I mean, it wouldn't be far-fetched, I would say. Let me correct myself. It wouldn't be far-fetched if she... Uh, if, if maybe everyone did conspire. Maybe it was premeditated. Maybe John O'Keefe was lured into that house. And I wouldn't even be considering that possibility any more than I already have if she hadn't sat there and said that that's what everybody's saying. Because I've heard like one or two people maybe allude to that. But I dismissed that shit immediately. I'm like, I don't, I've never seen any evidence of that. I'm trying to think who had the motive. Now, my first thought, because I watch too much TV and movies, my first thought was, Okay, well, you know, John O'Keefe saw something going on in the house that he shouldn't have seen. Or he knows something about somebody and they were like, let's get him into the house. You know, and he, and it was it involved drugs and a, and a big scheme. And that's why there was a DEA agent because the DEA agent's dirty, blah, 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 blah. I mean, of course, you know, my mind went there, but I eliminate those things as I collect facts. You know what I mean? I dismiss those things, uh, you know, as I, as I educate myself a little bit more. But, I mean, I'm not saying all that. I'm saying, you know, I don't know what the fuck happened in that house. I believe a dog attacked him. I believe somebody else attacked him. And I believe everybody else in the house is covering it up out of both loyalty or either loyalty or fear and or both that's what i believe thing so they say that they're all in on it they all committed this murder 
and or covered it up, even the ATF agent, even the Boston police officer, even their wives, even a 17 year old kid. We got a super chat. I think we got a super chat. Jody Six Seventeen, thank you for making us listen to this clown entertaining. Yes, yeah, clown. <laughs> thank you so much, Jody. I appreciate it. And their dog Chloe. That's why there's bikes. Just by the way, out of all the places, just on one arm and just there. Oh, and this is really important: the fabric was on the sleeve that would have been bitten into by the dog. Guess what? No dog DNA, none. A lot of people say, well, they should have taken tissues from those scratches. Why in the world with all the information they had at the time, which was this was a hit and run, the scratches were linear, the scratches weren't deep, the scratches were from a blunt fork. Why would anybody pay thousands of dollars to submit to a lab to see if they were caused by a dog? There was no evidence. No. Okay. Jesus, you fucking idiot. Um, I couldn't resist. Sorry, that just came out. You, you... Because he's a cop. And you just said yourself, a hit and run. A hit and run. You don't know. They haven't determined that it was a hit and run yet. That has yet, that had not been determined. When you examine a body that was killed under suspicious circumstances, you absolutely test every wound for DNA. And if you're testing it for DNA, then it would come up as a canine's DNA or something's DNA, whatever it was. Or if there's no DNA, then there's no DNA, but you absolutely test it for DNA. I even know that. And if you're telling me that that's not standard, then something needs to happen to where it becomes standard. That needs to become standard. Because I don't want to find out that a loved one of mine, especially if they're a police officer, gets murdered or killed under any suspicious circumstances and you don't test every single thing absolutely thoroughly. Samples should have absolutely been taken from every single blemish from that man in order to get the right answers as to what happened to him. There's nothing that you're going to tell me that's going to make me not think that or believe that. This man did not get thoroughly examined. I do not trust these medical examiners. I mean, this is evidence that could have exonerated Karen. I mean, you could say that he was dragged on the asphalt. You can test this. You could test the uh, the the scratches for traces of the asphalt in Brian Albert's in the road next to Brian Albert in front of his home. You could absolutely do that. Because if you're seeking justice, you're looking for evidence not to put someone away, but to exonerate them so that you could get to the truth. You 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 investigate via process of elimination. This is every single case that I've ever even talked about. I have to reassure my audience, like, listen, they have these investigations take time. They have to eliminate all suspects. If they have more than one person of interest, they have to go through each one and eliminate each one before they get to the person that they fixate on. They didn't do that in the Karen Reed case. That is sign number one that this is a frame up. That's red flag number one, that they did not conduct their investigation in this manner. Immediately, they focused on Karen Reed, the SUV, and then made things happen to where that's how it would look. That happened. There's no doubt about it. That a dog was anywhere involved in this. This originally came in as a domestic violence complaint because you had two people, girlfriend and boyfriend, 
and the result was a death. So in any event, the dog information proved to be. Okay, wait a minute. I find that interesting. She's saying that this originally came in as a domestic violence complaint. Really? I mean, she just fucking said that. Hold on a second. Anywhere involved in this. This originally came in as a domestic violence complaint because you had two people. Go for it. it originally came in as a domestic violence complaint. Who... Who called 911 and said that there's a domestic dispute? Where, where is there a, 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 a report that says that there was a domestic repute? Show, show me a report that says that there was a domestic dispute and that officers were dispatched to answer to a domestic dispute. Because I didn't hear that in Jen McCabe's 911 call. She didn't even say that. Yeah, and, and Bukaki was in during the medical examination. girlfriend and boyfriend and the result was a death so in any event the dog information proved to be absolutely false and there's a wonderful interesting moment no, in didn't. court where no, the defense counsel is asked about no it didn't but go ahead canine dna and his response is priceless we need to be concerned about canine dna where do we stand with that uh, no i think this is the only outstanding dna issue okay so all right so we're not dealing with canine no. dna one of the biggest okay Okay. Again, like I said, they probably are not even focused on that anymore. They are probably so sure that they could get this case dismissed. Again, they don't even need the dog. The dog, Chloe could have not even existed and it wouldn't matter as far as dismissing the charges from Karen Reed. It wouldn't matter whether or not Karen, uh, John O'Keefe was attacked by Chloe or not. It wouldn't matter for the defense to have to to have to get Karen Reed acquitted in a trial. It's already looking like they're going to get the case dismissed. At that point, they were already depending on all of the evidence and the findings from the federal investigation, the independent federal investigation into the Norfolk County DA's office. So, I mean... They're like, yeah, DNA, we're going to squabble over dog DNA right now? No, we don't need to do that. There's 3,100 pages of documents to go over. We're not going to do that. That makes perfect sense to me. Fallacies that has been part of promoting the conspiracy theory was that a text message sent from Jen McCabe, who remember was in the house, who in fact had been friends for about a decade with John O'Keefe. They were close friends who had invited John and Karen to the Alberts that evening, that she had texted words to the effect of how long to die in snow. She writes HOS. And the fallacy, and this was one of the biggest reasons why people latched on, the fallacy from the whole thing was it was based on, he has been hit, he is now lying in the snow. As he is lying in the snow, Karen Reed leaves and departs. Where does Karen Reed go? Karen Reed goes to John O'Keefe's house. And part of this is caught on film, but only part. Guess why? There is so much film missing from John O'Keefe's house. Now, we know. Didn't she, didn't she live there? I could be wrong. I don't know. Oh, from text messages that she had with Brian, the ATF agent, that he and her were involved in some sort of romantic yeah, situation, okay. at least the nature of these text messages. <laughs> I thought so. She fucking lived there. Why wouldn't she go? She dropped them off. She was going home. She was going home to sleep. Fuck. How is that suspicious that she went back to John O'Keefe's house?
I don't understand her argument here. Yo, lady, you're the worst true crime creator ever. Which makes you not even, even, it doesn't even matter, like, if you were FBI or not. Like, you, you have no credibility. You're not making any sense. Like, who gives a shit, like, that she went back to where she lives? The fuck does that? Everybody goes back to where they live. That's why they call it home. Dummy. Messages are romantic. And Karen Reed, in fact, tells Brian Higgins, the ATF agent, hey, I know where all his surveillance cameras are. I know everything. Don't worry. Don't worry about that. We're not going to get caught because she actually kisses Brian Higgins and is trying to start up a relationship or at least a romantic tryst with Brian Higgins behind John O'Keefe's back. I love that they still do. I love that they're still doing this. I love it. I love it. Like, and she shows John's face. Like, dude, okay. She's trying to create this, this image. Like, Karen Reed is such a hussy. <clears throat> she was cheating on this poor man right here. This poor fallen police officer. That's the picture she's painting, right? She's trying to get everybody so, oh my God. But I mean, sounds to me like you get a bunch of dudes that are just fucking riddled with testosterone that are inside that house drinking and doing God knows what else. And if that's true, that Higgins kissed Karen Reed and they've been talking behind John's back, well, that would give Higgins, uh, yeah, I mean, that would give Higgins more motive than Karen Reed. Karen Reed's going to do what? She's going to, she's going to, she's going to hit him with the car? That makes no sense. That makes absolutely no sense. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. I'm running you over the car because I want to fuck Higgins. What? No. I mean, I, I, I'm not even going to speculate, you know, but <laughs> I have before, but I'm just not going to do it today. But I mean, and Higgins was told to, to destroy his phone <laughs> by Michael Morrissey. Who does that? Why? And why did he talk to Brian Albert when he claimed to the grand jury that he was asleep at 2.22 a.m.? He, he, he calls Brian Albert. So that little bit of information right there makes him have more of a motive. It makes him more suspicious. It makes Higgins be the one with the most suspicion. And so that is how we know she has familiarity with John O'Keefe's video system. So after she returns to John O'Keefe's house, when John O'Keefe is lying out in the snow, he's been hit, he's got a cracked head, he's got internal organ damage, he's dying of hypothermia. Karen Reed starts worrying about things, about what happened. Now she doesn't have Jen McCabe's number or another childhood friend of John O'Keefe named Carrie. She doesn't have their numbers, but she wakes John O'Keefe's niece who does have those numbers. And she reaches out to Carrie and Jim McCabe because she says John hasn't come home. Well, Thank they didn't you, take John O'Keefe home. Where's John O'Keefe? So they end up driving around back to Brian Albert's location and in this tremendous snowstorm, white out snowstorm, guess who spies? John buried in inches and inches and inches of snow. In the middle of a white out snowstorm, you can barely drive underneath piles of snow. Karen Reed. Karen Reed says, look, he's over there. And Karen Reed goes to John O'Keefe. And she tries to give him mouth to mouth resuscitation. She lays on him to try to warm him up. Of course, he's frozen solid. And 911 is called, the ambulance arrives. Now, a lot of people, 
are upset with how Jen McCabe ends up being recorded on a recording of the 911 call. So it's not the actual 911 call, but uh, it is recorded from the device part of it. And they're upset with the fact, I think, that she's not hysterical. Jen McCabe is not hysterical. Two things on this. First, Jen McCabe knows that John O'Keefe is lying there in the snow. She's Googling how long to die in snow. She's just trying to process all of this. How did this happen? You know, she went to bed at past one in the morning. It's now the early morning hours, just hours later. It's dark. It's a blizzard. She's just trying to, what is happening? She calls 911. And I can tell you, some people under stress, that Karen Reed was hysterical from all accounts. She was hysterical because I think Karen Reed knew exactly what happened to John O'Keefe. She knew John O'Keefe was dead. She knew she hit him. She knew she left him out there all night. So Jim McCabe makes this call, the ambulance arrives. And when the ambulance arrived, and actually before the ambulance arrived, Karen Reed actually explained to Karen and Jim McCabe why her taillight was broken. Am I, did I hit him? I might've hit him. I think I could have hit him. Did I hit him? We're gonna show you some different clips of Karen Reed admitting. No offense, but you are a stupid asshole. <laughs> Lady. <laughs> Lady, <laughs> you're killing me right now. Um, <laughs> you're sitting here and you're saying that he was frozen solid. And hold on, let's 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 back up real quick. And I'm gonna split this into part two in, into two parts because I I, I want to go over Plevin stuff too. So maybe I'll go on again a little later tonight, or maybe I'll go on again tomorrow. Um. But uh, yeah, let, let, let's 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 take a look here. But um, but we'll go uh, we'll go another thirty minutes here. Uh, but I think we're gonna just be uh, sticking to uh, old Twattendoffer here. Oh, no. account. She was hysterical because I think Karen Reed knew exactly what. <laughs> Hold on. on this first. Jen McCabe knows that. John O'Keefe is lying there in the snow. She's Googling how long to die in snow. She's just trying to process all of this. How did this happen? You know, she went to bed at past one in the morning. It's now the early morning hours, just hours later. It's dark. It's a blizzard. She's just trying to, what is happening? She calls 911. And I can tell you, some people under stress, that Karen Reed was hysterical from all accounts. She was hysterical because I think Karen Reed knew exactly what happened to John O'Keefe. Okay. She knew John O'Keefe was dead. So let me get this straight. By your rationale, Jen McCabe is not hysterical because she's trying to figure out what the hell's going on, right? But Karen Reed is hysterical because she already knew what was going on. I'm going to say that one more time. Jen McCabe wasn't hysterical because she couldn't understand what was going on and she was just trying to compute everything and so she wasn't hysterical but Karen Reed was hysterical because she knew what was going on because that makes perfect sense it's dead she knew she hit him she knew she left him out there all night so Jim McCabe Makes this call. The ambulance arrives. Ooh, that's why. And when she, the ambulance that's arrives, why she's hysterical because she knew she hit him. Right. And actually, before the ambulance arrived, Karen Reed actually explained to Karen and Jim McKay why her taillight was broken. Am I, did I hit him? I might have hit him. I think I could have hit him. Did I hit him? We're going to show you some different clips of Karen Reed admitting, believing she hit him, and even saying something to her parents and them indicating that sure enough, she had said, Dad, I think I struck something. Okay. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Show you some different clips of Karen Reed admitting, believing she hit him. And even I'm going to show you some different clips of Karen Reed admitting, believing she hit him. And even, I'm going to show you some different clips of Karen Reed admitting, believing she hit him. And even saying something to yeah. her parents. Because I don't know of any such clip that exists of Karen Reed admitting and believing that she hit him. I don't know of any such clips where Karen Reed admits and believes that she hit John O'Keefe. I am not aware of any. 
but she said she was just going to show them right now. She's she's about to show them. Let's let's watch let's watch Jennifer Koffendoffer make good on her word where she's showing clips of Karen Reed admitting and believing that she hit John O'Keefe with her car. And them indicating that sure enough, she had said, Dad, I think I struck something. And on them. scene, when the medical EMTs arrived there, what does Karen Reed say? I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. I hit him. I okay. Now, her parent saying that she said, I think I struck something. She didn't say, I think I struck John. She said, I think I struck something. Something, I don't know, could that something have been John's car when she was pulling out of his driveway? When it was caught on camera? Could that something be that? But no, it has to be John O'Keefe because according to Jennifer Koffendoffer, that's them saying that Jennifer, that, 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 Karen Reed hit John O'Keefe with her car. Okay. Hit him, I hit him, I hit him. That's going to be the testimony. People might not like the testimony. Am I hit him? When the medical M indicated he this is, hit him, I think I could have hit him. This is what she considers evidence. So here she, put, she puts up, could I have hit him? Did I hit him? Ms. McCabe stated. Okay. This, she's showing an actual document where... Jennifer McCabe is stating, Jennifer McCabe herself is stating that Karen Reed's words were, could I have hit him? Did I hit him? Right? This is how Koffendoffer presents evidence. I love it. This is fucking fantastic. So this is, this is her saying, okay, this is a smoking gun right here. Karen Reed is quoted by Jennifer McCabe saying, could I have hit him? Did I hit him? In questions, right? Did I have hit him? Did I hit him? We're going to show you some different clips of Karen Reed admitting, believing she hit him, and even saying something. Okay. She said she's going to show some different clips, which don't exist, of Karen Reed admitting that she hit him, right? Now, then she says this to her parents and them indicating that sure enough she had said Dad, I them she said it to her parents clips of her saying it to her parents him and even saying something to her parents and, and even saying something to her parents them indicating that sure enough she had said dad i think i struck something on scene struck something okay now on scene let's get to that when the medical emts arrived there what does karen reed say i hit him i hit him i hit him Okay. Again, more hearsay. According to the EMTs who actually turned out one of them has <laughs> ties to the Alberts. Okay. I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. That's going to be the testimony. People might not Okay. And then and then what she does is show a clip of the interviewer asking a question but only shows the very part of that question, the little clip of that question. I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. Not even showing the question. But the idea is to imply that she said these things, but none of this is evidence. But only the idiots that watch her and think what she says actually holds any water is going to go... Holy cow. Karen Reed said she hit him. But where? See, this is this is one of those tricks. And I'm not getting political here. I'm just using a an example that involves politics. But I remember that I remember loving Obama. Voted for him for his first term. Yes, I did. Um, and I remember loving Obama. I mean, because that dude can talk. Okay? That dude can talk. And I remember speaking to somebody very close to me, explaining to me certain things. Right? And 
And I was like, well, he said free health care for everybody. He said free health care. I mean, that's great. I, I don't I, I don't make any money. I, I would love free health care. That's that's awesome. Right. And then this person says to me, he never said free health care. I'm like, what are you talking about? I heard him say it. And he was like, no, no. He said, everyone will get health care. Every American will get health care. He said it a bunch of times. And this was before Obamacare happened. Meaning like, oh, no, what he's going to do is make sure that everyone pays for insurance, whether they want it or not. He's going to take away your right to not pay health insurance, not have health insurance. He's going to say, you have to have it. Now, again, I'm not going to discuss my opinions on that. I'm saying he said something different than what I thought he said. That sugar that he poured in my ear really sweetened me up. You know what I mean? I fell for it. That's what she's doing here. That is the same exact tactic that she's using here. I'm going to show you, except she just straight up fucking lied. Obama still managed to do it without lying. Because he never said free health care. He said health care. Every American will have health care. It turned out, yeah, whether you fucking like it or not, you're going to get it based on, you know, if you work, you're getting health care. That's it. So here she is. And she says, I'm going to show you clips of Karen Reed admitting to hitting John O'Keefe. And yet she failed to do so. And then stated that her parents said, admitted to her that she did. But there's where the Obama trick actually comes in. Because she says indicated. Indicated. She, her parents indicated that she said, that she admitted to them. That she hit John O'Keefe. And then she, just to add the little cherry on top, she adds the 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 interviewer saying, I hit him, I hit him, I hit him, to add dramatics, to sell what she just fucking, the bullshit that she just fucking fed everybody. She just fucking added that in there to sweeten it up. This woman is a bullshit artist. She's not even good at it. Not like the testimony. People might want to say, oh, she said, did I hit him? I hit him? I hit him? No, that's not going to be the testimony. The testimony is going to be, I hit him. Now, some people don't like the fact that this EMS person was at a beach party, I believe six years prior with a child of one of the Alberts. They, they don't like that. Think about all the times you've been invited to a wedding, graduation ceremony, a beach party. Yeah, again, I mean, her testimony is going to be shot down, fucked, gone, done. If I'm a juror and I hear that shit, I don't want to hear it, especially after I hear Jen McCabe's own words, the very person who made this fucking very nefarious Google search, her own words, it was a question. Did I hit him? That's in the court document. And there are hundreds of people there and you don't know any of them. You, you could even be in the wedding and not know the other people in the wedding. What? Right? You're a college buddy, and then, and then the groomsmen. You... No, bro. No, bro. No. No. There's no fucking bridesmaid who isn't close to the bride. No fucking such thing. There's no fucking groomsman who isn't close to the groom. No fucking such thing. You could even be in the wedding and not know the guy who's getting married. Bullshit. There's no, shut up. Just stop it. There is no fucking way. No, you're a clown. <laughs> Twat. And you don't know, this happens all the time. This case is so interesting in my years of experience. It's the only time I have seen lies, false assertions, made up information, conjecture, speculation, 
be spun into a ridiculous conspiracy that, by the way, would involve the Canton Police Department, Massachusetts State Police, the ATF, the Boston Police Department, Canton Police and Fire Department, the District Attorney's Office, the Medical Examiner's Office. All, everybody has to be complicit, plus all the people in that house, all the people in that house. And everybody has to keep this huge secret, too. Yeah. Huge secret. And what was the secret that's been concocted? That John O'Keefe was dropped off that night. That John O'Keefe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. When you get a bunch of people who are, like, as I stated earlier, scared or loyal or both. Okay. Yeah. They're going to keep a secret. It absolutely happens. If each person has something to lose. Yeah. They'll keep that secret. Okay. went into Brian Albert's house. And that every person in that house began beating him mercilessly. They beat him bad enough to crack nobody, his skull. Nobody, then they brought their dog I, in on, on it. Nobody said that. Nobody fucking who fucking has any merit anyway said that every person beat this guy to death. And said, bite the arm, sick him. And then after he laid there dead, supposedly this happened in his basement. They brilliantly, an ATF agent and a Boston police officer, to cover up this horrible crime of beating somebody to death, a fellow police officer. They drug him out and threw him in the front yard. That, that was the way to cover all of this up. Let's beat him up, let's kill him, and then let's throw him out in the front yard. That way nobody will ever pin it on us. When I first heard it, I thought it was made up, but I'm not making it up. This is the conspiracy that's been concocted. Now let's get to motive because their concocted motive is really interesting. One of the people they say was involved was a 17 year old. Gee, I don't know who has motive. Um, so far uh, I could name, let's see, Matt McCabe would have motive. Um, Brian Higgins, according to you, would have motive. Um, Brian Albert would have motive. Colin Albert would have motive. And every single person would have motive for covering it up for any one of those people. Now, this 17-year-old was a football player, and he had a budding career. He had a scholarship. He was going off to college to play was, I should say. His life has been ruined because of people accusing him of a murder he didn't commit. They say hmm. that because... Interesting, though, because the FBI went and talked to him before, long before anybody even knew that the FBI was investigating this investigation. That's interesting. Sometime earlier, there were beer cans left in John O'Keefe's yard that they had this big beef. That, that's supposed to be the reason to commit murder because there's some beef over some beer cans that, because that's all they can seem to find, I guess. Colin Albert, he wasn't even there. He was at the birthday party, but text messages, witness statements from everybody are going to show he was picked up. He was picked up before John O'Keefe. Y'all who know football are like, bro, knock it off with the fucking football career. I don't even want to hear that shit. <laughs> If <laughs> and Karen Reed ever pulled their SUV up before he was ever hit, he was gone. And they're going to have cell phone records. They're going to have witness statements, as I mentioned, that show he was never even there. Let me, let me also put to bed one of the other concerns of the conspiracy theorists, okay? So one of the other concerns is that a guy named Lucky Lofgren, who was a snowplow driver that, again, this was a huge blizzard. And he was supposed to be clearing the roads, trying to make things clearable, right? Because snow was coming down. So, so far, what's really interesting is like what she's trying to do overall here is shoot down any of the things that people who believe Karen Reed is innocent would find suspicious. She's trying to shoot it all down, uh, one by one. She's trying to systematically shoot it down. But each time that she's done it so far, she's either lied or she's left something out. Something vital. So far, every single time, she's either straight up lied or left something out completely. Or both. Down in spades, all over John O'Keefe, by the way. So he has the plow he's bringing through. He was interviewed. He wasn't interviewed early on due to the fact that somebody else was interviewed with the plow company that said we didn't plow there that day. That made sense to police since there was a lot to plow. You would usually concentrate on the main thoroughfares. But in fact, Lucky Lawford did apparently run his plow down Fairview, where Brian Albert's house was. Now, he says he didn't see a body. Well, guess what? No one from the house saw a body. They exited the opposite side of the house from where the body was. It's a driving snowstorm. It's yeah, but the thing is, is he's got no skin in the game to fucking lie about it.
Of course, the people inside the house didn't see a body. Wouldn't it make more sense if they did? You don't think that we're, I mean, you think we're stupid enough to not find it suspicious that these people are all trying to testify to the idea that Karen Reed hit this man with her SUV, yet nobody saw him lying in the lawn? Because the snow was so heavy, the snow didn't start. Like, not heavily. There was only two inches of snow. I don't want to hear that shit. Like, right, it was not a snowstorm at 1 a.m. It's freezing outside. So if you're leaving the house and getting into your car that's completely on the other side in a driveway, you're going to be running to your car. You're not going to be perusing the front yard. In fact, one of the people did say, gosh, I thought I saw something over there, but then I didn't think anything of it. Lucky Lawfren doesn't see it. Well, Lucky Lawfren shouldn't see it. He sh I mean, so it was just quiet, right? So let me get this straight. Karen Reed's motive was that they were fighting, right? The motive that Karen Reed would have is that they were fighting. Yet Jen McCabe testifies that she didn't hear any fighting. Everybody witnessed, everybody who was at the waterfall gr grill stated, they, they seemed happy. They seemed fine. Yet you want to you want to create this motive that Karen Reed and him were fighting because she called him a bunch of times and said, I hate you on his voicemail in the middle of the night after they'd been drinking. And after he went somewhere and she didn't. Right. So but Jen McCabe says that she saw. The car pull up. She's watching out the window. She's texting with John. She talks to John. She doesn't hear any fighting. She sees the car pull up and then pull out and then pull alongside uh, along the side of the road. Then Jen McCabe says that she saw the SUV leave. Right? So in all of that, she didn't hear any fighting much less she didn't see john o'keefe get out of the vehicle much less than that she didn't see karen reed strike him with the vehicle before she drove off she's watching the entire thing from the from the window and it's not suspicious at all that she witnesses every movement of this suv other than what the person who's being accused of killing him supposedly did with her SUV. Jen McKee, Jen McKay witnessed every movement of this vehicle, except for the incident, the actual act of it in question. And nobody finds this suspicious. Okay. <laughs> he should be concentrating on plowing the road. He's supposed to be plowing. He should be making sure uh, that he does his job. Do you know how many mailboxes are hit by snowplow drivers? Because they, in fact, concentrating on the road in front of them and their blade gets out wider and they take out mailboxes. It's a lot. I did a lot of research on this because because people were trying to make a big deal about the fact that Lucky Lawford didn't see the body. No, she did a lot of research. But he saw the body. It was underneath snow. It was a driving snowstorm. It was bad. It was bad. It was cold. And people were trying to get in their cars. And Lucky Lawford was doing his job. Now, the other thing Lucky Lawford says is that there was a vehicle that was parked in front of Brian Albert's house in the early morning hours. He even states what kind of vehicle he thinks it might be, and that it's gray. Now, why do conspiracy theorists love this? Well, they love this because the kind of vehicle that he named was actually a vehicle that was owned by the Albert's brother, Brian Albert's brother. Oh, my gosh. I mean, dude, lady. <laughs> I mean, you're like making you're you're making your own you're making the karen reed's case for her right here i mean every time you talk like i could add my own little fucking music to what you're saying here and a vehicle he thinks it might be and that it's great now why do conspiracy theorists love this well they love this because the kind of vehicle that he named was actually a vehicle that was owned by the albert's brother brian albert's brother and was sometimes driven by his brother's son colin only problem with it, that vehicle is black. Now, the mystery car that Lucky Lawfren. <laughs> I mean, lady. <laughs> thought was there. 
It's never, ever been figured out. Let's just say he saw a vehicle there. Maybe it was parked there and it was a guest of somebody else in one of the other houses. Now this, by the way, is in the early morning hours, but you know, it's possible. Conspiracy theorists say, oh yeah, we're going to put a Ford edge there to block the view of the body. Uh, no, it's coming from quite a distance. When you look at these pictures from the front door, they drug the body out. These people, John O'Keefe was a big man, well over six foot tall. He was stout. He was a police officer. He was well-trained and he was a good six foot one. But yeah, yeah, he's a big guy. It would take a, a dead body is dead weight. It is very difficult to drag. So it would take numerous two to three men. Really? Because Brian Albert's a big guy. Higgins is a big guy. I mean, and who's to say that two people didn't fucking drag him out? Who's to say three people didn't drag him out? How do you know? Only one person dragged him out. Who's saying that? Like, why are you even addressing this? Because I find that suspicious too. Where, where, do you know something that we don't? Do you know something that we don't? Did one person drag it out? Because I don't remember anybody saying only one person dragged John O'Keefe's body out. Why wouldn't, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, it might, it might take two people to drag him out. Sure. Like. You meant to drag him out and brilliantly drop him in the front yard by the curb, curtilage of the front yard. A Ford Edge isn't going to hide that. It's going to be seen. If there were ring cameras at other locations, it's going to be seen. Now, that's another big question here is the ring camera. Where's that footage? Well, I can tell you I have a ring camera. And Yeah, where where is that footage? I'd love to know where that footage is. My ring cameras work from very specific advantages. You can't see every square inch of my yard or backyard or side yards with the ring camera. Now, there was one across the street that apparently looked right. forward to the house. And again, there's no footage that I've been made aware of. of the Why isn't there any footage? Why isn't there any footage? Like, you realize that you're raising the very questions. And you're sitting here acting like, well, there's no footage. Assuming that anybody with common sense wouldn't ask, well, why isn't there any footage? That's the first question that comes to mind. There's a ring camera across the street. She states it herself. There's a ring camera across the street, but there's no footage. Like as if that's just, hey, so nothing happened. Right? No. What happened to the footage? I want to know where the footage is. You're telling me that it's the neighbor of Brian Albert. The neighbor is also a cop. And he's Brian Albert's neighbor. So probably friends, maybe. I don't know. But so where's the ring camera footage from across the street? You don't think that people with common sense who are trying to eliminate the possibility of a conspiracy, who genuinely want to eliminate the possibility of conspiracy, are going to ask that question? Why wouldn't anybody with common sense who's trying to eliminate the possibility of a, of a, of a conspiracy, why wouldn't they ask, where's the ring camera footage from the neighbor? Of these individuals dragging the body out. There's also library footage that the conspiracy theorists love to make a big deal about. There's a library that you could drive by to get from the bar area mm -hmm. get to Fairview. Those videos are A, motion detected, so it would depend on exactly if their motion detector picked it up or not. What way did Karen Reed actually drive back to John O'Keefe's house? This case is going to trial in April, by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. The judge has been amazing on this case. The only the thing I don't understand is why Judge Canone has not issued a gag order. <laughs> that's all plop, that's all Plevin Doffer's got here is... That's all she's got is, is, is a prayer that this is going to go to trial. Dear sweet baby Jesus, um, I know that every single thing I've said is absolute and utter bullshit. Uh, and I know I have no evidence of anything, but please let this go to trial. Please. So I have more shit to talk about.
Unreal, dude. This lady's amazing. And protective order on everything in this case. I'm guessing if she ever, ever has a case like this, she will in the future because this case has been, the only word I know to describe it is the facts have been completely bastardized. Bastardized and it's hurt a lot of people. Yeah. Let's first talk about the O'Keefe's. You did that. The O'Keefe's have been absolutely maligned, disparaged, yelled at, screamed at, called names, threatened in social media and in person at the courthouse steps where they go to listen to the hearings pertaining to their dead son. Okay, you see all these people there? Now again, I wouldn't do that. Okay? I would not do that. But see, here's the thing, is I don't live there. Let's play that one more time, and even though it's difficult to watch, because I, I I don't like I don't like seeing it. I don't like seeing victims' families treated like this. But I'm going to make a very very uh I'm I'm going to make a very important point here. Ed son. Okay. See all those people right there, all of those people with signs. Okay, these are people who are angry. These are people who are angry, and they're rightfully angry. And why are they angry with the O'Keefe's? Because these people have power to make a change. They are in a position to demand change. And they feel betrayed. Not, they don't feel betrayed by, by them as far as getting justice for John O'Keefe. They feel betrayed by those parents of John O'Keefe in their efforts to be able to make sure that this doesn't happen again to anybody else. That's why they feel betrayed. That's why they feel contempt for the O'Keefe's walking up those stairs. As much as I, I, I can't stand seeing things like this, I do understand it. I understand these people being angry. In their mind, these people right here are thinking, we're out here risking our necks, risking our reputations, risking our, our lives, risking our jobs, risking our livelihoods. We're out here putting it on the line to make sure that this never happens to anybody again. And you are supporting the very system that we are trying to make sure never gets to do this to anybody again, never gets to do what they're doing to you again to anybody else. That's where their anger is coming from. And that's not even the O'Keefe's. <laughs> that's not even the O'Keefe's. But the bottom line is, if these people are actually booing the O'Keefe's, or saying the things that they've been saying, like Turtle Boy himself, right? Take Turtle Boy, for instance. And the things that he said, things that he said here on this channel, when I asked him straight up, do you regret? And he says, no. And I can't blame him. He's out here. The guy did two months in jail trying to uncover the truth as to what happened to this these people's family member, who is a Boston police officer, and yet they're showing up to court, sitting next to the very people who at least covered up John O'Keefe's murder. This has got to be frustrating. This has got to be frustrating to not just Turtle Boy and his efforts, but it's got to be frustrating to the very people of Canton, to the very people of the, uh, of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And I believe these people are victims. I do. I believe that they're victims of not just this. They are the epitome of victims in this sense because they are victims because they lost their loved one. Someone to be very proud of. For numerous reasons. They lost him, someone that they were very proud of and they loved very much. But they're also victims because they trust their local system. They trust local law enforcement because they were so proud of their son being a cop. They think, no way. 
It would be crazy me. It would be dishonoring my son's memory. I'm not speaking for them. I'm just assuming and trying to imagine what it might be like being them. But I would assume that they would be like, well, at least a rationale for it would be, well, it would be dishonoring to my son and everything that he did if I start side-eyeing the law enforcement agents that are trying to get him justice. And if all of them are sitting there going, if everybody is sitting there going, oh my God, you know, the, 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 this, this is this is a conspiracy, this is a conspiracy, and then the McCabe's and the Alberts are sitting next to them going, listen, there's that's just smoke and mirrors. We're out there every day trying to figure out what happened. We're trying to make sure that the person responsible is put away. That's the only true reassurance, the closest thing to real reassurance that they're going to get in their minds. You think that they, they're, they're, they're going to look at a guy like Turtle Boy and think that he's going to offer reassurance to them after the loss that they've suffered? That they, they're going to look at a guy like Turtle Boy and get reassurance from him, the reassurance they're looking for? No. Of course they're going to get the reassurance in their minds. They're going to get the reassurance from the elected officials and the appointed people and all of the people wearing badges that took an oath that go out there every day in their minds and risk it all just like their son did. Of course, they're going to look at them as the safe way to look at it. Of course, they're going to take their word. You think they're going to take the word of a guy who writes a blog and sits on his channel going, let's fuck. Daddy's ready to fuck. No. They're not going to do that. So I understand where they're coming from. But I understand where Turtle Boy's coming from too. Because he's like, yo, regardless of how I carry myself, look at the fucking facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen in my fucking life, dude. This is the craziest shit I've ever seen. I've never seen a case where I'm, like, actually understanding where a victim's family might get scrutiny. Except for maybe even just just this little bit much in the Idaho, the Moscow, Idaho, University of Idaho killings. I mean, I, I, I've never seen that before. I never thought I, I would see the day where I'd be sitting here doing that. But listen, guys, um, I am going to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, I might go live depending on what my insomnia is like. <laughs> <laughs> I might go live later on and continue with uh, Plevin. Uh, if not, I'll do so tomorrow. <clears throat> um, but uh, just see if uh, if some of you uh, celebrating St. Patty's Day uh, are still up and 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 in the mood. So we'll see what happens. But um, uh, I'll put up a I'll put up a a poll in the in the community, and you guys can go vote. Uh, if you guys think I should do a late night live. Okay. Um, but guys, I love you very much. I appreciate all of you guys and I'll be, all you guys watching on Twitter. There's a lot of people watching on Twitter. I appreciate you guys watching. Um, you guys are amazing. All of you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, we will do this again very soon, my friends.